Okay, guys, how you doing? How's it going with the podcast? Let's show you watching. Good to see you. It's me, and also it's him. Hey. Once I hit the button, and it works. Hello, boys hey. and girls. Hey. How's everybody? Hey, ding. Hey. Uh, Wolfden podcast time. So much has happened in the past week. That's what I say every time we open the show. <laughs> um, There is a Nintendo Switch Online playtest. Yes, it is happening right now. Uh, nope. Oh, it's not? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Things are just leaking from it. Uh, It starts on Thursday, I believe. Okay. Yeah. But we already know what it's about. Because yes. people be breaking them NDAs. Yes, which we will do today. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we're not part of it. Well, so, well, I'm not part eh. of it, so I'll break all the NDAs I want. Um, this is leading me to suspect it might be a Nintendo announcement tomorrow. Okay. I think there's a small chance there will be a Nintendo announcement tomorrow. Okay. To get ahead of this playtest. They, we've seen some stuff about this playtest, uh-huh. and it leads me to believe that this playtest isn't for a game per se. I think it might be for uh, something that they will turn into like a game in the future. Okay. Like I don't think what we're going to be seeing during this playtest is a- an actual game. Okay, but I'm sure we'll get into that. There's other news like the analog 3D yes. that everybody has been uh, talking about yes. for a long time and wondering when we're going to get that. We finally got a, a, an actual look at it that wasn't shrouded in darkness. Um, the Odin 2 Portal. Some specs. Okay. I'm not going to get it. <laughs> I'm not that excited about it. Um, some Steam Deck news. Some Steam Deck news. Some Spider-Man 2 news. Uh, if you were looking forward for to DLC, sorry. Uh, Microsoft well, News, Alan Wake 2 News, uh, Blooper Team News, uh, and more. Wolf Den Dad in the chat says, I'm having Rudy Coffee in my official Wolf Den podcast mug. Available in the Wolf Den merch store shortly. He's got an exclusive and he's leaking it. Yeah. Talk about you know non-disclosure agreements shameless Bill. plug hoping i get a win tower suite from their profits we didn't make that many yeah. also <laughs> speaking of leaking it i'm holding it in my hand right now <laughs> but uh it's not ready for the prime time yet because i'm waiting for us to get the podcast shirts oh this isn't a oh that i haven't told anybody <laughs> uh, this isn't a podcast this is just a regular wolf right. den mug but the shirt is an actual wolf den podcast okay. shirt have I even told you? No, I you have even not. Tell you. No, you no. have not. You didn't tell me anything. Yeah, we're getting uh, unbelievable specific Wolfden podcast shirts. Okay, yeah, they're, they're two very nice. years older than you. <laughs> you would think. Anyway, hey guys, hey, uh, a- thank you for the subs. We got uh, what do we got here? We got Junior Moser. Thanks for the twenty-five months, and we got Ray Danny. Thanks for that twenty-eight months. And I think that's it. In time for the holidays? Yes. Soon, I hope. I hope everything will be soon. Um, I'll announce now the new stuff in the merch store will not be on sale for Black Friday. But okay. other stuff, older stuff, probably will be on sale for Black Friday. Okay. So if you want to get older stuff and newer stuff, you should wait till Black Friday. But uh, it's all while supplies last, so you kind of run the risk right. of it selling out. But yeah. I don't think this stuff will sell out. Uh, Justin Coley with two pounds. Uh, hey, Wolves, literally top of the morning to ya. Uh, Justin Coley. Yes. Long time. Yes. He liked one of my tweets today, and I was like, Justin Coley. (laughs) I remember him. (laughs) Um, uh, Jeffrey Swordson, thank you for the Prime subscription. Don't forget to register to vote if you haven't already. I did last week. Okay. I, I am registered. I should check that. I had a. I think since I moved, I yeah, had, you, I had to redo yeah. it. So I'm probably okay. Yeah. So suck on that, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Let's just. Oh wait. Before we get into any news, we actually have to talk about. Yeah. Some games you can Ninten- get with your Nintendo Switch Online subscription. That's right. Uh, the good Lord Nintendo is blessing us with many free games this month. Oh my God. Uh, Thank starting, you so much. Of course, with uh, Switch Online Plus expansion pack. Banjo Tooie is coming uh on October 25th, so three days from now. Is this significantly better than Banjo Oney? I have no idea because <laughs> Banjo Oney is a bad game. They look exactly the same. 
chat. I'm, sh- I'm sure there's going to be somebody saying, like, no, no, different, uh, the Jiggies and Gruntilda and all that. But um, I don't know. They look exactly the same to me. Uh, I bl- the uh, the trailer for this does fe- does mention certain features. Like, it now has widescreen support. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool Not when they many... add one. Wa- did they add it or was it there already? Because I don't know if... GoldenEye had it there already. Yeah. I don't know if it was on the original N64 cartridge. But th- this version uh, specifically has widescreen support. I don't know if Banjo One has widescreen support. No, so that that's that's yeah. too old. Although, well, because well, GoldenEye predates Banjo, and that had widescreen support. I was also gonna say these are rare games, yes. so they might have some. The you know if it has widescreen support. No, this is not the rare replay version of Banjo Kazooie. They didn't help at all. No, what I'm saying is my theory is that because it's a rare game. They might have had an enhanced version of it that they submitted instead of the original N64 well, that's what I'm ROM. Saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But Something's going to be to different. that point. This is not. This clearly is not the um, remaster that was released on the Xbox 360. Right, like yeah. like the GoldenEye game. Gold, yeah, the, the GoldenEye one that was here was not the enhanced version, but it still still uh, had widescreen support. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Griffin Griffinix says you'd hate Tui Bob. Okay. <laughs> And Wolf Then Dad says, I voted already. He did early voting, and you know that those don't count. Yeah, no, those don't count. <laughs> those are fake. Those are yeah, fake. Those, yeah, where are those votes coming from? <laughs> Wizard of the Coin, thank you for the 13 months. Just voted today. Again, I'm Again, sorry. Yeah, but, no, no that's, that's called I'm cheating. I'm kidding. We're kidding. That's called cheating. It's a joke. You see, it's funny because... <laughs> also, we got Nintendo Switch game trials... Yes. Three of them. This is a bigger deal than ban- than shitty old Banjo Tooie. <laughs> so here's the thing. Occasionally, again, the good Lord Nintendo blesses us with full game trials. These are the full games you can play for free for a limited period of time. So starting tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific uh, and running until October 30th, uh, you can download and try the full versions of of the games A Little to the Left, Curse to Golf, and Vampire Survivors. Now, again, those are the full games, but only in the United States. In Europe, a continent that doesn't matter, you guys get Curse to Golf, uh, Minecraft Dungeons, and A Little to the Left. Oh, so you don't get Vampire Survivors. You don't get Vampire Survivors. You get get, uh, Curse to Golf. No, you get Minecraft Dungeons. Minecraft Dungeons. Everybody gets a little to the left and Curse to Golf. Yes. But we get Vampire Survivors and Europe gets Minecraft Dungeons. Correct. Minecraft Dungeons is good. Is it? I I mean, I don't want to say that it's good, but it's a a good free game. It's a good game to have for free on Switch Online. That's fine. For for only a week. Correct. Uh, Vampire Survivors, though everybody loves Vampire Survivors. Yes. So, a uh, curse to golf. You like the, that game? Front of the show, yes. I st- I like that game. Never beat the first level. <laughs> Played it a fucking million times. Right. Also, that first level is the demo. Uh huh. So, can have a lot of fun just playing that. Yep. But now, if you've ever beaten the demo and never bought it, here you go. Uh, uh, also, those guys are working on a new game. Uh, Denki Works is the name of the company. New game is some Tanuki guy who delivers mail and he does BMX tricks on a bike. Okay. Forgot the name of the game. We All talked right. about it on the show <laughs> twice know, already. Um, so in addition to... Oh, I just lost the tweet. Damn it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so real quick though, so you get those games, uh, but in addition to that, at least on the American side of things, you can save on digital versions of these games. Uh, you can get 40% off a little to the left, 75% off Curse to Golf, and 15% Damn. off Vampire Survivor, and that's for the duration of the trial period. So if you play the games and you like them, you can buy them at a discount. We love it when Nintendo yes. lets you play games for free. That's cool. Yes. I mean, it's only available with your Nintendo Switch Online subscription. Correct. I think just the base is all you need for that. Yes. So, Banjo 2, you need the expansion. Pack. Yes. But for this, any member counts. Mm-hmm. You also happen to need the expansion pass 
to submit to get a chance to play the Nintendo Switch Online play test that's yes. happening this week. Uh, hardly anybody got selected for this. Yeah. Uh, it, it closed immediately. So the way that they did it was last week they said at 11 o'clock on Thursday, I think it was, they said, uh, go to this website and uh, apply to be part of our play test. Uh, I clicked on the link the second it hit 11 o'clock and it immediately said we're, we, we ran out of people. Like, we're done. We don't mm -hmm. need that many people. So they didn't select a lot of people. In Japan, however, they did a raffle. So anybody could enter and then they just picked randomly from the raffle. Uh, but anyway... I didn't get picked. However, I'm piggybacking off of somebody else. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I we'll see if that even works. It might not even yeah. work. Um, there is NDAs involved. Uh, there, there's like a little uh, terms of service that they make you agree to mm -hmm. uh, say that you're not going to share any of this information. It all already got leaked, obviously. Yes. Just like how they said you can't show any information or any gameplay from the Nintendo Switch Sports uh play test yeah and then everybody did anyway mm -hmm. this is going to be the same situation except you might have noticed they're already taking down uh, yes stuff from the play test yes uh, this article that we have here had a, a tweet from a uh, twitter user stealth uh and the tweet is gone <laughs> yep but there is a google doc that they link that has all of the screenshots yes now i'll ask this to you should i show all of the screenshots because i really don't care but there is a chance this podcast doesn't make it past midnight. <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. We can talk about it all we want. Yes. Maybe we should err on the side of caution. We'll read the article. Okay. But we I will won't... describe everything that yes. we're seeing. Also, I can just link the Google Doc in the description. Right. Right? Yeah. Uh, click the link on the description of the YouTube video. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so let's read the article. Uh, Nintendo Switch Online's uh, playtest hasn't actually begun yet, but details have already leaked online. Nintendo made a vague announcement earlier in October inviting people to sign up for a Switch Online playtest. Around 10,000 people were admitted into the test program earlier this month. Nintendo shared very few details about the mystery event, except that a Switch Online plus expansion pack membership was necessary to participate. Ahead of the event beginning on October 21st, Nintendo published a website for participating users detailing the event. Uh, and it appears to be some it appears to be some uh it appears to be some sort of a massively multiplayer online experience. Almost immediately, the contents of the website leaked online. Nintendo appears to be using DMCA notices in response to some of the leaked information on social media. With the Nintendo Switch Online playtest program, we aim to test the boundaries of mass multiplayer functionality and gameplay on our servers, Nintendo wrote on the website according to the user screen according to a user screen recording of it. Okay, so here's the here's the deal. On the YouTube video, uh in the YouTube uh, uh what do you call it? The, the on the YouTube live stream and mm -hmm. also in the video that will be posted after this. Uh I have linked the article that we're reading. Yes. And in the second paragraph, the third paragraph of that article, it links the Google Doc where yes. you can see all of the screenshots and pictures and stuff. So there you go. So we got two barriers yes. <laughs> before uh, we get dinged. So. All right. The leak depicts Nintendo describing the game as being, a, uh, being about a working... Uh, sorry. The leak depicts Nintendo describing the game as being about working with other players to develop a planet by farming resources and being creative. As you progress across the planet, you'll discover new lands, enemies, and resources that will become uh, essential to your journey. Nintendo wrote, according to the leaked materials, uh, the leaks say players will uh, be beacons that emit a healing light to develop the land. The beacons are described as basically a cla uh, claimant over a piece of a planet uh, where the player is reportedly able to move, lift, or edit items within the highlighted area. Players are only able to edit a space that th uh, that's there. Places outside of beacon zones are public areas that anyone can work in, the league says. In public areas, anyone can pick up things, place them, and edit them. Uh, then you can work on an area. 
Beyond that, there's also an area called the dev core, which is essentially a social hub. Another big part of it seems to be user-generated content. The leaked materials say players can make all sorts of different uh, user-generated content in-game after taking a test to show they understand the importance of respectful communication. The game looks a lot like the UGC platforms like Fortnite and Roblox, where people can create and develop their own games within the larger system. Nintendo hasn't said when players can expect the game to open up to a wider audience. So... It's also unclear how many people will be able to play at once, mm -hmm. uh, whether or not these will be like servers or if it will be like a massive server. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking if they're doing a play test, it could be a large server, like yeah. an MMO style thing. Uh, there is a hub world, like you said. Uh, there's user generated stuff, but I think it's ugly. Like if you look at the... Um, so on the in the third paragraph they link the Google Doc. Yeah, um, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, yeah, and there's like weird little cavemen type guys. Right, and it does look like a little bit like Minecraft. There's weird little cavemen type guys. I don't think this is the game. No, I think this no, is this is something that they hobbled together. So. Uh, so that you don't know what they're. This is clearly some sort with. of like alpha build of something yeah. that they're working on. Um, like you said, to your point, it's probably not indicative of a specific game yeah. that's going to come out, but the playtest as a whole is probably re representative of several ideas they have that they want to test on a large scale. Yeah. So we talked last week about the pokemon leaks yeah and one of those was that they've worked on an mmo yeah and this could be something similar to that mm -hmm. nintendo notoriously has a terrible online infrastructure uh-huh um their net code is very bad even the new mario party that came out mm -hmm. uh every clip i'm seeing of people playing it online uh there's lag like crazy yeah. uh and that is very unfortunate because uh it makes you not want to play the game online yeah it makes me not like Mario Maker. The online could be so great, but the fact that almost every match has horrible lag, it makes me not want to play it online. Yeah. Like I could, ha I could have spent hours playing that, and uh, it ruined a whole portion of a game for me just mm -hmm. because the online is so bad. Um, so I could see Nintendo having ideas for online games that would require a lot of people to connect but the way that their net code works now it's all reliant on everybody's connection so right. like when you play a four player smash brothers match mm -hmm. every single person all four of the people have to have a great connection if one of those connections is a little bad yeah the whole thing sucks so if you had even 16 people which sounds like a lot but it's not that's how many people are playing in a call of duty match yeah you have 16 people connected to each other. You need a server of some kind. Yeah. And Nintendo just does not have that sort of uh, shit figured out. Right. Um, they've changed their netcode a little bit. Like we've talked about how uh, Monster Hunter Rise used like a new sort of netcode. Mm -hmm. And it's better. But uh, I'd imagine that that wouldn't work for this many people to connect with each right. other. Right. So that's what this is. This is testing that out. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking maybe because there, I haven't seen Nintendo do something like this ever, where they have people sign NDAs and they do like a massive test like this. Yeah, and they that's completely unannounced. Like like they they kind of announced it quietly, and then all of the contents that are in this play test, mm -hmm. they're secret about it and. They, we've never seen these characters before or anything. Mm -hmm. This is very strange for Nintendo to do. And I thought that maybe because this is so strange that before the playtest, we would hear something from Nintendo. Yeah. But now after looking at the contents of the playtest, I'm thinking this is all like a ruse and they don't need to announce any of the stuff that's in the playtest because it's throwaway content. Right. And they'll add the important stuff maybe at a later date. Yeah. Edward Bova linked us a Reddit thread uh, because you can already download the playtest, mm -hmm. which is what I did. Yeah. 
And because of that, people data mined it. Of course. This Reddit thread is from r slash gaming leaks and rumors. The NSO playtest program has already been data mined. Codename, developer, soundtrack, and more discovered. Well, that's a lot of information. Yes. This Reddit post says it hasn't even been 24 hours and the playtest program has been data mined by Sky on Blue Sky. The playtest. Should I get a Blue Sky? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the playtest seems to have a code name of Rockstock and is likely developed by EPD4 using the NPLN netcode. You look up what the hell that means. LPLN netcode. Not only, not only that, but it seems that the game has mini games. Max, a character creator, and will likely have a PvP focus. When I first saw this playtest, my first thought was, please be Street Pass. <laughs> the but top result is Nintendo is using NPLN, a new in-house server system. Oh, I'd like to know more about the server system. All right. Uh, that makes sense. Didn't we, didn't we literally just talk about that? Uh, uh, oh, from Oatmeal Dome. Nintendo is using NPLN, a new in-house server system for Splatoon 3. Uh, many of the new oh. lobbies features uh, take advantage of NPLN. They would, uh, they would be more difficult or impossible to add with the old system, NEX. Note that in-game co netcode is likely still peer-to-peer. -peer. Okay. Is this the same system that was used for Monster Hunter? Uh, I think it was. I don't know. Yeah, starting with Monster Hunter 3. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Uh, additionally, it seems to upload UGC, uh, user-generated content. Yeah. You have to answer 20 questions. And playtesters will be partaking in daily surveys and a final one at the end. This is going to be weird because I'm going to be piggybacking off of somebody else's account. So I'm yeah. not going to be able to like see it from the start to finish. But mm -hmm. whatever, we'll see what happens. Neatest of all, the soundtrack is already partially leaked. Okay, well, I'm not going to play that on stream. More clips of the soundtrack. Okay, not just more clips. The entire soundtrack <laughs> were posted here. It's an entirely original composition. The game is looking cooler and cooler, in my opinion. It hasn't even been a day, and this much has been leaked. So they're using the new server system to, I guess, try to connect as many people as to like stre truly tr stress test. Yeah, because yeah. Splatoon, how many people can go into one server? You know, like, yeah. I think it's eight. Something uh, like that. This must be a much bigger deal. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have a PvP focus. I want to see what these mechs look like. Oh, it, nothing. It's just text. It's just a. Uh, they're looking at text files. Mech plane, mech plant, mech shave. Okay. Uh, mech connect, mech crane, mech boat, mech bike. So, who knows? Character creator, they're not going to show you what it looks like. With my power, I may be able to rebuild you stronger than you were. Let us begin with your hair. Do you remember its color? Remaking your body. Very good. And now your skin tone, if you please. So it That sounds like character creation. Yeah, it yeah. walks you through making a character. Excellent. And thus your body, now better suited for your adventure, has been remade. Though compared to your old form, this one may take some getting used to. It looks like they put a lot of work into whatever this game is. Like, yeah. like looking at the screenshots and stuff, it looks like something they just hacked together to try to test this technology but it looks like they built in some lore and stuff so yeah. maybe i'm wrong about that maybe it's just that they're not done with the game yeah <laughs> maybe it's just really an early development mm -hmm. but no i think that this is important because their online infrastructure is horrible and uh they need to fix that and yeah. this is uh one step towards getting into the modern era yeah slowly but surely I also heard a rumor from somewhere that there would be an announcement from Nintendo tomorrow. Uh, About what this is? No, just the Switch 2. But, uh, you know, I don't exactly. I wouldn't bet a lot of money on it. Right. I would imagine Nintendo might say something right before this happens. But mm -hmm. uh, because they, they're they going to want to get ahead of these leaks. But the yeah. leaks already happened. So. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows what Nintendo's doing? Because this is all surprising to me. Yeah. This is all stuff that they've never done before. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Uh, I don't think any of the stuff in this uh, particularly pertains to a Switch 2. Yeah. Like, you don't need a new Nintendo Switch to use some new netcode. Yeah. It doesn't, you can do all that shit with the current Switch. 
Um, maybe some better Wi-Fi card would be nice, mm -hmm. but like that's not gonna really fix anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think this has nothing to do with that, but. Again, it's just a step forward to making their online a little bit better. Maybe the next Smash Brothers will be actually playable online. Mm -hmm. And have it cut into their holiday sales? No way. Yeah, that's what people keep saying about announcing a Switch 2 before yeah. the holidays. They announced the Switch 1 before the holidays. Yeah, so, so I, don't, I don't think it's going to be. Also, too, like, you know, what the Switch is the third best-selling system of all time. I think they're... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look... It would make a lot more sense for them to announce it in January. Yeah. Because then you're after the, the, mm -hmm. the Switch sales. And I think it's rumored that the Switch 2 will be somewhere around May mm -hmm. release. So it would make a lot more sense for them to yeah. announce it in January. But again, they announced the Switch 2 in October of 2016, right before the holidays. Probably because the Wii U sold very bad. Yeah. <laughs> but, and they didn't, just didn't care. But, you know, anything's possible. So anyway... Uh, that's about all the stuff. I mean, we would have more if we would, sh if we were showing it, but yeah. I would say click on it yourself. Uh, I'm not that scared of Nintendo, but I am a little scared. You should always be scared of Nintendo. You never know where they are. I saw a tweet that was almost tweet of the week and it was from hard drive. And it was a headline that said, uh, oh, never mind. This doesn't pertain to this at all, but <laughs> it was just a headline that said, uh, uh, Joe Biden, uh, Joe Biden captured by ninjas uh, relatively easily or something like, like <laughs> Joe Biden uh, ninjas captured Joe Biden with with amazing ease. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Caleb Fox, thanks for the 26 months. Did you bros know that you're on Amazon Music? Will probably did. Uh, yes. Uh, we're also on audible.com, which I'm sure shares a lot of the same um user information so yeah he said, good we're everywhere he said listen to the podcast on there for around a year before switching hmm. okay anthony melee thank you for the 100 bits hey wolf bros i was in new york city for the first time ever on wednesday attending a concert and i didn't think i really experienced the city what's some things i should do the next time to really get the authentic new york city experience I hear almost getting hit by... I was just about to say. I heard almost getting hit by a car and shouting, A, I'm walking here, is not the correct response. Can you confirm? No, it is the correct yes. response. I saw a TikTok where a guy was joking, and he was like, hey, I'm walking here. Just kidding. Nobody really says that. And then I was like, I said that at least twice just as a reflex yeah. and meant it. <laughs> like not ironically yeah, no it, that like it just it comes out and it, it happens it's real like, and yeah. happens you know maybe it's not exactly a i'm walking here maybe it's like a watch it or what's your problem i or... literally one time a cab almost hit me and i hit the hood of the car and i said hey i'm walking yeah. here and then and then like a second later i was like i just did the thing and yeah. i didn't mean to <laughs> at all i just literally almost got yeah. hit by a car so if it's not exactly a i'm walking here it's some variation watch of it that. man yeah. hey come on man yeah it's like you know? what's your problem yeah you blind um, Some sort of turtle in a trench coat. Hey, you still going to LaGuardia? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, you. Yeah. That's your issue is you weren't almost hit by a car. Yeah, no, that should have happened. Also, uh, getting into a fight with one of the Times Square Elmos, that's a good one. I was walking in Times Square <laughs> on Saturday. Yeah. And a dude dressed as Sonic ran up to me and tapped me on the shoulder and I just didn't look and kept walking. He was probably a fan. There was a good <laughs> chance he was a fan. Well, I'm sorry, guy dressed up as Sonic. <laughs> I am terrified of you. So I kept walking. <laughs> he was also like like this big. Yeah. <laughs> um so he was ac he was lore accurate. <laughs> so and he was flanked by two Gokus also. <laughs> um so anyway, don't go to Times Square if that's yeah. not a, a, a New York City experience. I don't know. Go to Brooklyn. You'll probably have a better New York City yeah. experience <laughs> over there. Um, take a piss in the subway. I don't know. Yeah. 
uh, pick a sports team and just get really sad all the time about it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Did, did the Yankees win? I don't even know. The Mets lost, so I don't give a shit anymore. Did the Yankees win, or are they just in? Uh, let's see. Your first mistake was going to Times Square. I had to go through it, <laughs> horizontally through it, and that that was a big mistake. I think the Yankees against the Dodgers. Oh, okay. Is that the... Oh, yeah, that's the World Series. Okay. Shit. I knew that they were in the World Series. Shit. Everybody was going nuts. Damn about. it. I, I knew everybody was going nuts about the Mets doing good, and then all of a sudden one day everyone was like, nah, the Yankees are in. Fuck the Mets. <laughs> Yo, yeah, because the, the Mets were doing good, and then the Mets do what they always do, and they screw up, and everyone just gets sad and yeah. with the tail between the legs. No one away. cared that the Yankees were doing good because no they always do good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kabbalah Bags with 24 months. He says, Hey, Wolf Bros, we're going to New York before Christmas, and my partner's never been there. Any things we can't miss? Any good used game stores? No, there's no <laughs> good used game stores. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's video games in New York and JNL game, but honestly, uh, they're all really expensive. If you're going before Christmas, that means you're probably going to wind up seeing the tree. And while you're seeing the tree, just go two feet to the left, and Nintendo store's right there. Yeah, the Nintendo store, I think, is pretty essential. Yeah. Because there's not any other ones in America. Yeah. Um, I always like to point people to Food Gallery 32 because it's yeah. a nice uh, Korean food court. Otherwise, uh, eat in Brooklyn at least once. <laughs> uh, anyway. Let's move on here. Yes. New 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 news topic. Uh I found the hard drive article breaking. Ninjas have kidnapped Joe Biden with remarkable ease. That's what it remarkable yeah. ease. There you go. Oh, there was a uh, Jimmy Carter hanging in there to pre order Metroid Prime Four. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. How long he's lasted. Yeah. <laughs> uh let's talk about analog yes! 3d we finally we finally have the reveal the analog 3d the future is here even though it's the past uh, <laughs> a reimagining of the n64 in 4k resolution 10 times the resolution of the original n64 the first and perhaps greatest multiplayer system of all time analog 3d is a 100 percent compatible with every original n64 game ever made region free uh bluetooth L uh le Dual band Wi-Fi, four original style controller ports, entirely new next generation analog hardware featuring 3D OS, engineered entirely in FPGA, no emulation. Pause. There's a couple of asterisks in there. Yeah, I would like to add. I would like to address those asterisks immediately. Uh, there, actually, there's only one asterisk. No, there's two. Are there two asterisks? There's two. I actually don't see any on this. There's no actual asterisks. Oh, okay. But there's two metaphorical asterisks. All right, you tell. tell you well, you say the first one. Well, the first one that I'm thinking of is 4K is a little smaller because it's cropped from on the sides, because it's it's four by three. All right, so then there's three asterisks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's it's 4K but four by three, so it's not actually like 4K is 3840 pixels. Yeah, so it's not even actually it's not four thousand. Right. So it's already a little bit lower, and then this is four by three, so it's even lower than that. Right. So that's right. asterisk number one. It's 4K ish. Yes. Yeah. And then number the number two, I'm gonna say my what's the number two? No emulation. I was gonna yes. Yeah. But no emulation, it's hardware emulation. It's hardware emulation. They don't they like to say no emulation because whenever you're talking about a clone console, which this is, this is a clone console, it almost always refers to software emulation. The fact that it's a computer program running on uh, another computer program inside of it, which can lead to bugs and glitches and things that were not there um, in the original game. Hardware emulation tends to be more accurate to the original system, but it's still hardware emulation. It's still taking a device and making it think it's another device. That is what emulation is. Yeah. And I'll say that hardware emulation is really cool. Yes. But we're at the point now in software emulation where it's almost indistinguishable. Yeah. There's like almost, unless the device that's doing the software emulation is a little shitty, mm -hmm. there's almost never a time when you can tell the difference. Yeah. I so. like, like I like Analog's products and I think they do, they do really good work, but I do think they need to stop 
using the no emulation tagline in their marketing because that is just not true. They could just say no software emulation. Yeah. That would be, I think that that's actually gets the point across. Yes. That, that that's being truthful and gets the point across. Yeah. I think that analog gets a little bit of uh, an unfair shake recently. Yeah, after the after the analog pocket. Yeah, everybody liked it when it came out, and then almost immediately everybody turned on analog all of a sudden. I think it was mostly because of the way they handled like the special editions and like the pre-ordering of it. Because like, it was before that. I think it was just they became popular and everybody hates the popular. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah. but and I also like, they were unavailable. Yeah, I, it was the fact that it came out and was almost immediately unavailable, yeah. and and people got salty. Which sucks, about it. but yeah, you know. it, it does suck. But I think there's a place for analog products. I yeah, think it's absolutely. great that they're even on the market at all. Mm -hmm. So I don't hate this. What's the third asterisk? Uh, the analog pocket is 100 percent compatible with every original N64 game ever made. Okay, there is, as far as I can tell, no way to connect a 64 dd okay. to this device now you may be thinking what's the big deal that wasn't a successful peripheral it only came out in japan like that's still a whole section of games that cannot be played on the analog 3d the mega sg that they put out is compatible with the sega cd add-on and even is compatible with the 32X if you get the DAC. So though that was 100% compatible. This currently has no way to connect a 64DD to it. And it's region free, so there should be no reason why it couldn't. We don't know what the bottom of this thing looks like. We do. Oh, we do? There's a pic there's, there is a picture of the bottom. I've seen the bottom. There is no port. How do you get it? Scroll it's all the way down. Oh, this illustration? Yeah. Yeah, there's absolutely no... Uh... Yeah way they could open it. well that sucks you would think that they would think of that because they uh, all of their consoles have like a lot of peripheral stuff yeah. the analog pocket has like a million adapters that you can yeah for it, so that kind of sucks i mean they're technically not lying when they say it's compatible with every n64 game true because those are n64 dd games yeah um also uh, when i saw that i don't think they've said that with any console before that they've made that it's a hundred percent compatible with every game i don't think they've ever said that before i think this is probably the easiest console to say that with because there are a very small amount of games on the n64 library yeah it's like it's like 300 something total yeah that's like nothing yeah. compared to every other yeah. uh, uh, console library that's out there so i wouldn't put it past them if they actually got all 300 yeah. games and just tried them all out yeah uh, Analog 3D represents a milestone in video game preservation. It's not only the world's first reimagining of the N64, uh, but the world's first 100% compatible recreation of an N64. Analog spent nearly four years engineering its FPGA. Uh, no more in no more incompatibilities found in software emulation like input lag, graphic and audio inaccuracies, timing and frame rate issues, and more. For the first time, you can re-experience the N64 exactly as it was meant to be without compromise. It is very difficult to do N64 emulation. Yeah. I mean, the software emulation people have done a really good job yeah. uh, recently, but it's taken a while to get here. Because yeah. even N64 development back then was hard. My understanding is that every game developed on N64 used the N64 hardware differently. Yeah. So it's very hard to get 100% compatibility because every cartridge is doing something different with the hardware. And the fact that some cartridges had to have extra hardware in it to make them run at all. Yeah. So so it, it, I'm sure that they did an insane amount of work to get yeah. everything uh, Absolutely. Go, going here. Uh, f the unmistakable soul and signature of the CRT on your HD TV in 4K. Unlike its 2D predecessors, the N64 wasn't about pixels. The original hardware's distinctive approach to rendering polygons and textures depends on the CRT far more critically than simpler 2D systems. Even, uh, even game developers had to leverage the interplay between the hardware and a CRT to achieve harmony. While very few modern upscalers have transformed the 2D era of video games with pixel perfect accuracy, the N64 demands something far more radical, the unmistakable essence of a CRT. 
Analog 3D brings true CRT reference quality to your HDTV in 4K. Experience the N64 with unmatched authenticity and zero lag. It's the N64 Reborn. Analog 3D's original display modes are meticulously reproduced, virtually indistinguishable recreations of CRT displays, capturing the warmth, depth, and texture in every frame. The soft glow of phosphors and vibrant uh, colors unite with immersive scan lines and shadow masks. This isn't just upscaling, it's an unprecedented transformation. First of all, this website is gorgeous. Yes. Second of all, analog has had really good filters before. Yes. Like the analog pocket has great CRT filters. Yes. I think that their filters influenced a lot of the filters that we see now in RetroArch because yeah. those have gotten a lot better. Yeah. Uh, they used to not be good. Yeah. And ever since the analog pocket, those have gotten a lot better. Uh, so I believe this that they actually have some pretty good filters. Yeah. Uh, being unmistakable from a CRT, that's going to be, that would be incredibly hard to accomplish yeah. because you're looking at a, an LCD screen. <laughs> I mean, you would have to have a that and then a CRT right next to each other just to see yeah, you know, I, I, what it looks like. I guess so. I, I mean, back in the day, they would use the CRT TV, like developers would use the CRT TV to their advantage. Like the way like it produced its images was used to like create, you know, certain effects that you can't yeah. get otherwise and and a lot of these emulators uh use shaders now to accomplish what those crts look yeah. like and a lot of them have been doing really good jobs and a lot yeah. of these uh retro collections uh like uh i think the castlevania collection has good filters like a lot yeah. of these retro collections started having pretty decent filters yeah uh the nintendo switch online doesn't really have good filters except for the Game Boy Advance games. They have mm. really nice filters. Yeah. Also, I'll note that uh, this is talking a lot about having a CRT look. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was sh uh, shown that it's this is not going to work with the analog DAC. That that's something mm. that makes it so that you can play their HDMI consoles on a CRT TV, like yeah. like back, like yeah. backwards compatible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this, I think, does not have compatibility with that. Interesting. So you actually cannot natively play this on a CRT. Yeah. You'd have to do some fuckery, which is, that's a little upsetting. Yeah. But uh, that's like a deep, like, all right, like that, it, it'd be nice if it was, if it had that sort of compatibility. Yeah. But this has a lot of other things going for it. So I don't want to shit on it too much. Yeah, analog 3D is compatible with HDTVs. It is not compatible with CRTs or the analog DAC. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That stinks. I think that that's like not really available. The analog DAC. I last I checked, I thought it was. It was like a hundred bucks, right? Yeah, and, it's then, expensive. and then like they didn't really make that many. Yeah, something like that. I don't. I don't know. Uh, all right. Next up, the gold standard of multiplayer. The N64 is perhaps the greatest multiplayer system of all time. Okay. Uh, around 70% of the game's library supports multiplayer. It isn't, um, it isn't just an option. It's the heart of the experience when multiplayer was a bridge that connected us in a simple way. In-person multiplayer creates experiences that aren't just better together. It creates experiences that are only possible together. Analog 3D is a revival of the very essence of multiplayer brought back to life with the soul of the N64 at its core. Um, and that leads us into the 8BitDo 64 controller. Uh, Analog worked closely with 8BitDo to design a wireless Bluetooth controller um, wireless bluetooth recreation of the original n64 control with modern form factor crafted with an uncompromising attention to detail the c buttons the d-pad and a b buttons retain the original size style layout and feel featuring a superior quality hall effects joystick uh, with the original style n64 gate um say goodbye to the infamous loose joysticks that plagued the original controllers and now you can uh and now you can even update your 8-bit do 64 controller directly with analog by simply plugging oh. it in. A tribute to play N64 like never before. So, first of all, there are some people who are more excited about this controller than they are about the console. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised it took them this long to do an N64 controller. Yeah. But by the same token, when they announced the Mega SG, that's also when 8-bit do finally revealed their Genesis style controller. Right. So it like it, there's sort of precedent for that. I think they're uh in in bed with each other. Oh, I absolutely. think they're making out and kissing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um so this controller is cool because yes. the modern 
take on the old uh, N64 controller. Always appreciated. Uh, Retro Fighter was the first one that I could remember that did a modern take yes. on, a, on an N64 controller. And that's controller. a good controller, too. That's a phenomenal controller, yeah. and I always compare everything to that. Uh, Ape do makes amazing controllers. This looks very similar to that, although the start button's nice and big. Mm -hmm. You do have the C, bu the C pad and the B and A buttons look like they do on an N64 controller. The stick gate also is nice yes it looks like a gamecube style stick gate however i will say it is not noble and that's what it is on an n64 controller. well i isn't the um i think by gate they mean like the uh like the the edging on the side it's that's octagonal the, yeah. yeah yeah no but it's on an n64 oval? controller it's 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 an octagon but it's stretched top to bottom hmm like it's not a, yeah, it's yeah. Not a, a, a complete circle take me to the and no one ever does that for some reason right so that's a little unfortunate but Another thing people are asking is, what are you going to do about the Z button? This is one Z button on N64 controller. Well, this has two Z buttons. This has two Z buttons. That's somebody, usually what they do. Yeah, somebody in my chat said we haven't seen the back of the controller. I have a picture of the back of the controller. Yeah, here. it's... So, there's two Z buttons. One on the left, one on the right. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I, th I've had that on other controllers, like the yeah. Retro Fighters one. Uh, and it works fine. Because if you change your grip, you know, on an, on an actual N64 controller... You move where the Z button goes. This yeah. makes it so you don't have to change your grip at all for any game, really. So uh, I think this is perfect. Mm -hmm. I like this a lot. Um, I'll note that I pre-ordered uh, the black version of yes. the, uh, of the uh, analog 3D. Mm -hmm. However, I didn't realize it doesn't come with a controller at all. Yes, that's the thing. Like You have to plug in an actual N64 controller or you have to buy this controller separately. Yes. I was like, oh, I forgot. Well, I I want a, I want one of these, so I went to buy it, and the only one that was available was the white one. So right. I'm gonna have a black console with a white controller, and it's and you buy it from Amazon. <laughs> yeah, there's an Amazon yeah. link, which is fine. Ape do might send it to us. Also, yeah. Analog might send it to us. So you might end up with the fucking console. Woo I was like, I because I do want this, and I'm like, I don't want to spend <laughs> two hundred fifty dollars right now. I kind of poor. People were weird to me. I tweeted. I feel like I have to, people send me stuff on Twitter, so yeah. I feel like I have to publicly say things when people when enough people send me something. Mm -hmm. So people were sending me this. So I was like, all right, I got it, everybody. Yeah. And then people were like, um, you're gonna be giving it, and I was like, is that like a dig? Like I'm I. <sighs> pre-ordered it because i don't know if i'm yeah, gonna get it yeah that's not a guarantee also yeah. a lot of like youtubers that we follow like we're pre-ordering it yeah like just because like people I, I, have gotten analog stuff in the past doesn't mean they're getting this one i guess it seems like i'm tweeting it like an endorsement yeah like like i'm getting it meaning that i'm receiving it yeah. but like i'm buying it because i want it and yeah. i happen to be giving it also that's nice but yeah it, it i'm not gonna give it a nice review or say nice things about it because they're giving it like, yeah i don't give a fuck about that um what else um oh let's just go to the well actually it has wi-fi Yes. I'm confused about that. I doubt that this is going to have like online multiplayer. No. I'd imagine the Wi Fi is for updates because it says that the Ape Duke controller can update w from the console. Itself. Yes. So that's got to be an update. Let's, um, well, down further, they talk about uh, the OS on the system 3D OS. It's an evolution of analog OS, the definitive scholarly operating system for playing and experiencing the entire era of video games redesigned in 4k exclusively for the analog 3d loaded with features uniquely crafted for the n64 developed for everyone who understands that the details define the experience 3d os uh sets the standard for exploring the depths of the n64 so i'm assuming that the wi-fi might be a, uh, a part of this new os that they have where like it'll pull information about the game from its servers onto 3D OS. There's a little analog pocket illustration right there, and I think that's the bottom of a Game Boy DVD. Oh, right. Interesting. Very. Yeah, I think it'll do updates and stuff on, yeah. online or whatever, but I don't think it'll have like online multiplayer. Maybe yeah. something like that. Other people are asking whether or not you'll be able to. Uh, play ROMs on it. And just like every other analog console that comes out, uh, it's not official, but yeah. almost immediately when it comes out, it usually has a way to play ROMs on it. Yeah. You might have to wait like a week or two. Mm -hmm. For the analog pocket, it took like a decent amount of time yeah. to like get like real ROMs on it. 
Um, but if that's really a concern to you, get a ROM cart like an EverDrive that will yeah. almost certainly work on you. Yeah. But I'd imagine you won't even need that. I'd imagine yeah. you'd just be able to have a micro SD card in there and have something work. Yeah. Uh, it will not play any other games, though. It'll probably just only be N64 games. Right. It does not have an open FPGA core, which is something that a lot of people were upset about. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's fine. Yeah. This is just an N64. Mm -hmm. Also, the price that we've been not talking about is $250. Which I honestly thought it was going to be $400. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a lot more. Yeah. I think that's a fair price. I think it's a fair price, too. And that's also getting a lot of flack. And I don't know why. Yeah. I it, think that's it's perfectly $50 reasonable. It's $50 more than what the N64 launched at back in 1996. Mm. But, like, let's let's do the inflation calendar uh, calculator. People are saying SD card slot. Is it SD or micro SD? All their uh, other consoles were micro SD. It is. Uh, no, it, they're all SD card slots. The Pocket was the only micro SD card one. The Mega SG is definitely a micro SD. No, it's not. Uh, so this is a full-size SD card slot with an included 16 gigabyte SD card. Oh. So they're giving you an SD card uh, pre-installed. Uh, it has two USB-A ports for charging and wire controller support. Uh, it has dual band Wi-Fi plus over the air wireless 3D OS updating. That is okay, what the so Wi-Fi yeah, is for. Yeah. for update. Uh, f yes, change my spelling to inflation calculator. Okay, so one ninety nine ninety nine. I'll just do two hundred. Round it up. Two hundred dollars in let's say November nineteen ninety six. Uh, has the same buying power as four hundred dollars today. Yeah, that so, makes sense. Yeah, but my brain is. Uh, I think the cost is justified in a couple of different ways. Yeah. Uh, it it's first of all just a, gonna every console that analog makes is is high quality in some yes. way. Uh, it plays all N sixty four games. Mm -hmm. Right now, buy an N sixty four on eBay. Is already a lot of money. Yeah. And if you want that N64 modded to have an HDMI port on it, it's a lot more money. N64s are going for 130 to 220 bucks. Yeah. So already. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to play that on an HDMI display, you can get a Super 64 right. by Eon, which yeah. is $100. That's yeah. the easiest way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's more than $100. I think it's like... It's like 150 bucks. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can get it for like 120 but yeah. still, it's over $100 just for that. And that's the easiest plug and play version. If you want to HDMI mod it yourself, there are HDMI mods that you yeah. can buy, the little chip that you solder in there. Yeah. It's a decent amount of work, and they cost upwards of $200 yeah. for the chip itself, and you still have to do the work. Yeah. If you, so if that's you want a lot. One, yeah. And if you want one with that pre installed, it's like $800. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. We've, we, I think we saw it at too many games for like four. I saw it at Long Island Retro, and it was one of the Fantastic Colors, and it was like eight hundred dollars. That's fucked. Yeah, but no, that. And then also, if you want to put ROMs on, you're gonna need like an EverDrive. When an yeah. EverDrive is a hundred dollars. EverDrive, yeah. <laughs> so, all things considered, this is a great price. Right. I, again would have expected it they could have gotten away with selling it for 400 yeah i mean technically it's gonna be you know closer to 300 because you do have to buy the controller because that's come separately unless you already have a controller laying around yeah you can use an old controller yeah. uh, old n64 controllers uh are not great the n64 no. controller is just not a great controller right. and then also those thumbsticks go bad real easy yeah so uh but then again you don't really get that thumbstick experience on any other aftermarket controllers yeah. because of the stick gate. And yeah. some games kind of require you to have a shitty thumbstick. Yeah. I think Mario 64, again, Mario 64, the controller was designed for that game specifically. So, mm -hmm. like, the way that can, that analog stick works, like, is, like, married perfectly to Mario 64. The manual for the Mega SG says that it is an SD. Yes, but I remember doing a micro SD. I I had to use a micro SD card because for some reason one of my full size SD cards wasn't working, so I had to use a micro SD card with the adapter. Yeah, yeah, I probably did that too. Now, if you are now, if you do want to save some money, DK Aldi's 
has an N64 <laughs> player pack in acceptable condition uh, for only 80 bucks. Uh, you can upgrade that to have an original uh, N64 controller because apparently they give you like a third party knockoff. So if you want an original authentic N64 controller, that's another 25 bucks. And if you want to add the AV to HDMI pack, that's another 25 bucks. So now you're looking at $130 for an N64 from DK Oldies. So if you want to do- go down that rabbit hole, you can still pre-order the black analog 3D. Yeah, it's still available. So, which who, is shocking. I'm surprised the white is out of stock. But yeah, that's I'd, another. I'd imagine they made less of those. Yeah. I think that they're working off of what they had with the analog pocket. Maybe yeah. the white one. They were well, the white one is also out of the white analog pocket is out of stock. I know, but when they made the analog pocket, yeah, I'm sure more people pre-ordered the black one. Yeah. So they made less white ones, and now they're probably regretting that. Right. Uh, I had a toss-up. I didn't know which one I wanted, but I ended up going with the black one because all my consoles in my living room are black. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to keep it there. Okay. I think the white one would have looked cooler in videos and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know why I got black. <laughs> but um, we'll see what happens. Yes. Um, which one do you prefer? I prefer the black one. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll... If, if they end up offering one, I'll try to get a white one. Okay. Uh... I'll note that the black one is still in stock. Yes. However, with the controllers, the black one is out of stock and mm-hmm. the white one is in stock. And that's why I had to get the uh, the white one. Yeah. These are all also pre-orders. Uh, there are, I don't think there is a release date. However, no, it the, just says Q1 2025. The controller has a release date of March 19th. Yeah. So we can imagine that it'll be somewhere around, around there. there. Yeah. Uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, uh, Analog has had pretty terrible pre-ordering systems, mm-hmm. like with the analog. Everybody wanted analog. Uh, I'm the sorry, pocket. the pocket. Everybody yeah. wanted the pocket. All these different versions of the pocket, they've been really hard to get. They've mm-hmm. gotten a little bit better. Uh, this was a lot more smooth. Yeah. I was an hour late to the pre-order, and I got one. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see what happens when they actually start rolling them out. Maybe mm-hmm. it'll be... There's still time for them to be a little bit of a fiasco. Yeah. Uh, LJ says the black controller never went to pre-order yet, as far as I know. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think it was ever. Oh, it's just the black ones is currently unavailable. The yeah. white one you can pre-order. That's very bizarre. Sad there's no retro ge- gray, but we all know that'll be down the road. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, people in the chat are waiting for the fantastic colors. Yeah. Uh, I. I mean, I'd imagine next year. Uh, yeah or you know 2026 there will be some fantastic colors Mm -hmm. that's it we had a lot of thoughts on the uh analog i'm excited for it i think it'll be cool it'll be cool yeah it'll be cool and i'll use it for a week and then uh I'll emulate everything on a software emulator (laughs) from then on because it's just a lot easier yeah (laughs) although the fact that it's an hd an HDMI console with wireless controllers, I think is more like, it's more appealing to me to want to hook up to a TV now than trying to like dig out the N64, or, like make sure I have the right connectors and sure the controller. Oh works. yeah. Yeah. But you know, what's easier than that. What? Just turning on one of my emulators. That's True. Already plugged in. True. <laughs> True. Um, but no, I, uh, you're right. This is the easiest thing for people to get and it is the most easy to recommend i had somebody yeah. ask me the other day somebody who knows nothing about video games hey i found my old n64 what do i need to plug it in and i was like you open a fucking can of worms yeah, right a, now. a buddy of mine has been trying to hook up his old systems for a while and i'm like sending him all the stuff and it's yeah. like it's gonna get expensive he's like yeah it's expensive so. I, this person did not care like about quality so yeah. i was like eh you need like an adapter and they're like what about this and they showed me the one that we have like the shitty one. Oh yeah and i was like they're like this it's not really working and i was like yeah those things sometimes they you gotta try a couple times yeah it doesn't work i was like you could get like this and then i send them a hundred dollar fucking adapter mm-hmm. anyway uh who anybody Majin jameson thanks for the 29 months uh anthony melee with 100 bits this device can cure cancer may not cure cancer <laughs> I guess that's referring to the asterisks. Yes. The analog, uh, page. Uh, oh, and Farmer Gooch came in and paid his dues. Thank you. Let's see if I can get the button right. Back, Back 
backlog, 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 backlog. Oh yeah, baby. It's backlog time. What's that, Will? That is a segment of the Wolf Den podcast where we go through our entire video game collection. 973 games in this here video game collection split between the two of us over the course of almost 40 years because remember i'm old kids uh today we're gonna pick one of those games at random talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it number 361 out of the random number generator. 361 that would be resident evil remake gamecube gamecube well yeah it's selected the switch version but we originally played it on gamecube i happen to have it on switch i have it on a lot of systems actually but yeah we played it on we played the gamecube version this is the second resident evil game in a month yeah we talked about resident evil 5 yep which we, we, we like we're hesitant to recommend uh i am not hesitant to recommend this one though this game is good so we jumped into the resident evil series on the second game yes on n64 n64 so we never played the first one until this game no part of the reason why i wanted a gamecube was because of this game right because i liked resident evil 2 so much and i wanted to play the first one but we didn't have a playstation but when they announced the gamecube they announced that all the resident evil games were going to come to the gamecube uh starting with a remake of resident evil 1 and i'm like hell yeah Sign me up. Now, is that because they made Resident Evil 4? So, I think what happened was... uh, Because right now, a lot of games, when they come to... uh, Like, when they're making a sequel on another console, sometimes they will just port the older games in that engine. Yeah, because I think what happened was Shinji Mikami was, like, shopping around Resident Evil to, like, try and get, like, a, a good deal with, like, the publishers... And they had a bad experience at Microsoft. They didn't really like the deal. They got a PlayStation. And then when they went to Nintendo, they said, this this is the only company that understands what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put Resident Evil 4 on GameCube. And we're going to put all the Resident Evil games on here. And we're going to start with a remake of Resident Evil 1. Yeah. Uh, I guess the GameCube didn't feel like the adult console. No. But uh, this was, Nintendo was probably like, this is our end to try to get Nintendo some tried a lot of games. things to like make it like a, a more mature system. Yeah. Uh, and this was definitely one of them. Uh, no, the other one was Eternal Darkness. Eternal Darkness. Yeah. yeah. Which is their own game. Yeah. Um, this is amazing, though, this game. This, this is game a great was very game. good. Yeah. Um, I it, would say this is probably the best way to experience the first Resident Evil. Th- I would say this is the best way to experience the classic style Resident Evil, period. Because yeah. this is the original style of Resident Evil. It's fixed camera angles. It's uh, clunky controls. Uh, it's bad aiming. Uh, it's much more focused on puzzle solving and running away from zombies than it is anything else. Uh, but the way this game handles it in particular is so meticulously well thought out and well designed that like you kind of get you know you kind of just like get absorbed into it and you forget about all the problems um that the dated architecture of the game seems to have yeah. now what this game added was the uh, it added a lot like it added, it added a, lot. a lot to the formula of the game one of the things is that when you kill a zombie it stays there for the whole game yes because what happens is they have the opportunity to resurrect themselves and become the Crimson Head zombies, yes. which are faster, stronger, and you know harder to take down. And it's random. Like you might be walking by a body, and all of a sudden it comes up and starts coming after. Yeah, you. and but, that is it. Adds another level of uh, anxiety. To they, the game. they do give you a way to like you know make sure you don't get a Crimson Head. You can either you know score a perfect headshot, which you know is not easy in this game or you do this or you light the body on fire yeah (laughs) but you know that's resource management you have to make sure you have gasoline you have to make sure you have a lighter you have to make sure like you you know the body's still there so you can run back you know it's all these different things that like try to make the game you know more than originally was on playstation it added a whole extra sub story with the lisa trevor story arc which is what still one of the most terrifying things in any video game ever so yeah so They've recently remade Resident Evil 2. Yes. But that does not have the tank controls. No. So in the original Resident Evil games, the camera gets fixed to a, like 
a seemingly random point in the room, <laughs> like in the corner, like yeah. a security camera. Uh, and you're, the controls of the game are very strange by today's standards. Yeah. When you hit up on the control stick, the character moves forward yeah. no matter what way the camera is facing the character will move forward if you hit up, if yeah. that makes any sense. Uh, and the camera angle changes, so the direction that you move changes yeah. the whole time. So by today's standards, it is very strange. I, but I think that that is a, a fundamental mechanic to, yes. how, uh, to why these games were so interesting. Yes. I do know that for later versions of this game, because it, it, it did come out to other systems eventually. It came out on PS4, Xbox One, uh, Switch, and PC. Those versions attempted to fix the control scheme to make it more modernized, more fluid, um, so that, you know, up on the controller is just forward. Um, so, and it also added, like, proper widescreen support for modern displays. It's a... It's an option, though, isn't it? It's an option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't so have to use it. You those. don't have to use it. Yeah. So, but like that might help mitigate, so, like, for people who are not used to this kind of video game, because let's be real, a lot of you people watching are probably not used to this kind of video game. That does go a long way to help. I don't think they will remake, I don't think they will make Resident Evil games again with these types of controls. Absolutely not. So, I think it's kind of important for people, if they are interested in Resident Evil at all, to try one of these games out. Yes. And I think that this is like the, I guess, easiest to get into because is, it's at least a little more modern than the yeah. original uh, Resident Evil. Absolutely. Yeah, no, this is, of all the that style Resident Evil game, like this is the one to get because it's definitely the most modernized. You still get all, like all the sensibilities of like that classic style, but in a more <laughs> digestible uh, form, I guess you could say. Yeah, and... I always talk about how uh, video game controls have kind of all conformed. They've kind of like there's an expectation on how games control these days. Yeah. So there's a lot of games that feel samey and boring. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want something that fucking changes things up, if you want to experience something like you haven't before, I honestly think that this is something to go back to. Yeah. We don't often on the backlog suggest playing the game. <laughs> uh, and I think that this is one of those, one of those that. Yeah, no, is I, worth this, going this back is to. definitely like, I mean, it's been a long time since we've said like, definitely play this game. But like, this is definitely a game I recommend playing if you've never played it before. Even if you have played it before, it might be worth going back and like checking out. Um, you know, it, you know, it is spooky season. Might as well, you know, yeah. uh, Halloween's right around the corner um the game the game is you know it's a survival horror game it is many people say the original not the original survival horror game but the one that definitely like you know it changed a lot ma about made the, the genre popular yeah. uh it's more about exploration and puzzle solving and resource management than it is like about uh white knuckle action that the later games uh, became more famous for um so it is a game that like you can kind of like take your time with um, but that said, once you like know the game and like have experienced it, you can go through the game faster and faster and faster. And like people, people beat this game in like two hours. You might need to look some stuff up. Yeah, this, this like game. these these are definitely games we needed players guides for. We need back a players guide for uh, two. We had the players guide for one. Yeah, I think we yeah. got it because we had the players guide. For yeah, two. we were like we just knew like we we're gonna need it. Yeah, so. Uh... There's probably more looking stuff up than there would be in a modern Resident Evil game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the there's a big uh, big focus on puzzle solving, but also there's uh they still have a lot of the suspense yeah. of it being a survival horror because of the fact that zombies could come out of it basically anywhere. Yeah. Um, uh, in this game, you know, like I said, they added a lot of um, story elements and, you know, changed around the zombies. But they also like there's a very particular, a very famous moment in the original version of Resident Evil where the doll comes through the window and they they kept that in the game, but they changed when it happened. <laughs> so, like, you think it's going to happen, but like, oh, you don't. You're so OK. It's fine. Everything's, and then, like, you know, a few minutes later, then it happens. And like yeah. it just, every, everything it does, it like keeps you on your toes it keeps you on your guard it like makes you think it makes you aware of like 
your surroundings and what you're doing and like it really makes you feel like you're alone in this mansion trying to survive resident evil is really good at uh subverting expectations like that i yeah. i think it's resident evil 2 that has some moments that stick in my brain one of them is uh every time you open a door in the game it goes into oh it's doing it right now yeah it does a little cut scene where yeah it, it very slowly opens the door and that's just a way so they can load the next yeah, area mess the loading screen there's one random door in Resident Evil 2, the original Resident yeah. Evil 2, where the zombies come out of it. Yeah. And it freaks you out because the whole <laughs> game, you're used to yeah. the same cutscene and you think you're safe in that cutscene. And then all of a sudden, zombies come out of it. Yeah. Another way they subverted expectations for me is you can tell in older games when something is an asset that you can uh, manipulate or move or something or when something is a background asset. Yeah. Kind of like in old cartoons, you can tell yeah. when something is part of the background or when something is part of the fork, uh, or something that's going to move. Yeah. Um, and they did that in one of the rooms. Something that was clearly the background, all of a sudden the tyrant busts through yeah. it out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Resident Evil is very good at doing stuff like and that. And I think because now the way Resident Evil games back then worked was it was pre-rendered background so like those were like made ahead of time and then the the character models were you know full 3d polygonal uh yeah, you can see it models. here you can see yeah. how, how pixelated the background is but that being said this game was so goddamn beautiful that like <laughs> it blurred the line between like what was pre-rendered and what was full 3d like you genuinely could not tell the difference between the two and the way they would add like, you know, effects in the pre-render backgrounds, like the lighting, like the flickering of the candles, like, you know, things blowing in the wind. Like it just, it kept adding to that aura of like being a, a part of this like incredibly realistic looking world. Oh, there's a zombie. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, we, that's, this whole playthrough, there's like been barely any zombies. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's great. Yeah, I sh we were missed to mention, of course, this is the game where you you can choose between two characters. You play as Jill Valentine or Chris Redfield. Uh, both of them have unique experiences throughout the uh, throughout the storyline. Uh, this version of the game adds of uh, you know ways to like affect the ending. Uh, you can get you know a good ending if everybody survives. You get a bad ending if everybody dies. Um, so forth and so on. Uh, I would. I would say, you know, it, like it doesn't really affect difficulty, but if you pick Chris, he starts out with a knife and only a knife. Uh, you have to find the gun. Uh, Jill starts out with her gun. So that's something to keep well, in mind. She has less health, right? That the thing? I don't think so. She had something else wrong with her. She had the lockpick, too. Oh. Yeah. So is that easy mode? Are you saying it's easy mode? I'm saying it might be <laughs> a little bit easier. Um, yeah. I would say... Worth checking out if you've never uh, played a Resident Evil game. This is a great place Absolutely. to start. Or if you've played more modern Resident Evil games and you want to go back, this is the way to go back. Yeah, I, that, I like I said, this is definitely of all the classic style Resident Evil games. I think this is the one that you know still holds up the best and still is the one to play today. Uh, and you can either go back and play it on a GameCube, yeah. or uh, they have a the new version on the Switch. Yeah, Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox, PC. Um, I and, believe and they it's... have options to use the original controls. Yes. on those versions. Mm -hmm. so, uh, you have plenty of ways to go back and play this game if yeah. you want to. So, do it. <laughs> that's this game. Yeah. That's Resident Evil for mm -hmm. the GameCube and and elsewhere. Uh, so you got it on the Switch? Is that what happened? I th I think I bought it on Switch. I bought it on a pack with Resident Evil 4 or something. No, they came in a pack with Resident Evil 0. Because those oh. games get bundled all the time. Yeah, Resident Evil 0 is very similar. It, it yeah. looks the same. Uh, yeah. And that is a new game that came yeah. out on the GameCube. Uh, it was fine. That yeah, was a fine that's, that's, if we ever get to that backlog, I got opinions on that. Um, yeah, I think I got it in the pack with 0. And then I actually, for the PlayStation 4, I won it in a contest. <laughs> I entered an online contest and I got the code for Resident Evil 4. Okay. So, yeah. Good times. And it is verified on Steam Deck. So, $20 right now. Uh, I think I think Jill had less health. Okay. No, somebody on this Reddit thread is saying that Chris also is more likely to instant kill with a headshot. Interesting. I've never 
her dad yeah, or, or thought yeah. about that. I also just saw a clip of Jill instantly killing someone with a headshot. So. <laughs> oh, and now somebody's... Oh, wait. Jill is weak, and she was weak on the GameCube. However, the game has defense items, and Jill has enough inventory to carry a full heal and still have more slots than giving her more effective HP. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. Check out Resident Evil. Yeah. And come to a podcast sometime if you're watching this afterwards. Nobody does. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Um. Good game. Good game. Good ass dude. game. Good ass game, man. Nico Nix, thanks for the three months. It's nice to see this live for once. Oh my god, thanks for uh next news. Let's talk about the Odin Portal 2. Okay. Try to blast you. I guess, yeah, this is like a real quick one. This is just a tweet from Retro Game Court. Uh mm -hmm. the, the we heard about the Odin, the Ein Odin Portal 2. So okay, so let's get you guys familiarized. Why isn't this button working? Ein makes the Odin. It's a very high-end, very nice retro emulation console. Mm -hmm. It is an Android handheld. Uh, they market it as just an Android gaming machine. However, it is very good for emulation. Uh, it's a bit pricey. The most expensive one goes for around $500, which is kind of a lot for an Android emulation handheld. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's very nice. The Odin very nice. I liked it a lot. It came out at a time when there was a lot of really bad retro emulators. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a video on that. It is very nice. The Ein Odin 2 is a little bit better. Got better specs. The Ein Odin 2 Mini is the one that looks like a PS Vita. Yes. It is very nice. I like it a lot. I've been playing uh, Echoes of Wisdom on it. It's oh. very nice. Uh, it's, I like how tiny it is, how powerful it is, and the screen is very nice. It's AMOLED screen. Now, so, so so there's the Odin 1, the Odin 2 that has a little bit of a spec bump. Mm -hmm. There's the Odin 2 Mini, which is the same specs as the Odin 2. It's just Mini. Right. Now, there's the Odin 2 Portal, which has the same specs as the Odin 2 and the Odin 2 Mini. It just now is has a big 7-inch AMOLED screen. And that's it. <laughs> it's the same thing. Right. Uh, There is a pro and max version just like there is on the original odin 2 uh that's all fine and dandy uh i guess i'll read some of the specs uh oh and th there's pricing here yeah uh what do i want to read android uh, 13 <laughs> ram up to 16 gigabytes on the max storage up to one terabyte on the max that's kind of kind of it uh you're you're looking at early bird pricing of up to four hundred and seventy nine dollars, right? Re regular early bird pricing for five hundred dollars and retail price of five thirty, kind of a lot. Uh, but again, it's a like high end retro yeah. handheld. Uh, We're still in uh super early bird uh pricing right now. So if you wanted one of these things, you you can get it for the really cheap price. Uh, I'm on the website right now. It looks like they only have um. A black base model available a lot of these consoles usually ship the black one first for some reason yeah. like, like the standard color usually ships first so that might entice some people well if you go to the pro model they have all of all the colors available oh okay. so i guess the base model is only available in black oh they're not going to make a lot of base models you know people think so? usually don't go for the base model oh yeah people the base model looks the, like it's got the nothing pro or the max yeah um it's kind of like having a Steam Deck. Like, yeah. the, the, the games are going to play relatively the same as they do on a Steam Deck, mm -hmm. except you're not going to be able to play modern games. You're only going to be able to emulate stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then, also, it's just an Android handheld. There's no nothing on it. Like, it's just Android. You have to yeah. put all the emulators on it yourself, uh, which has gotten a lot easier. Uh, people also want me to talk about the, the, the front is all glass. I don't think that's, like, a particularly nice look. I think that's supposed to look like... I feel cool like, and like yeah, professional people and fit, nice. like will like treat that as a selling point. I don't think that's that nice. Yeah. Uh, I also kind of don't like how it's big. Like I like the Odin Two Mini because it's mini. Yeah. And it's this very similar spec. So, um, I'm not getting this, and I'm not gonna make a video on it. Uh, so there. So there.
This is not much different at all than the Odin 2 and the mm -hmm. Odin 2 Mini. So the Odin 2 original, I have a video on, the Pro and the Max. Mm -hmm. And then the Odin 2 Mini, the one with the AMOLED screen, I have a video on that. And if you put those two videos together, it equals a video on this. There you go. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the end of that. Uh, the screen does get up to 120 hertz. I don't know who that's helping because it's an Android device. Yeah. I don't think that that's like that's probably just like at all. That's like kind of a waste. Yeah, in my opinion. What are you playing on this thing up to 120 hertz? Didn't they have a Windows device, or did I make that up? They did. It was called the Loki. Okay, it's, it's it not on their, it's it was, not on their website. That's because they they fucking delete things. Like yeah. like I they so, okay so. They sent me one? No, I bought two. I bought two Lokis. Okay. One of the ones that I bought... Was a girl. <laughs> like the TV show. I get it. <laughs> one of the ones that I bought, they stopped selling immediately. Right. Like, I bought it on a pre-order, and by the time it came to my house, it wasn't listed anywhere anymore. Okay. Um, and then the, the other one that I bought mm -hmm. was the exact same specs as the w other one that I bought. Okay. So there was no reason to have to. Yeah. So I don't think anybody liked the Loki, so they just decided that it wasn't good. Right. It was fine. It was just a really low powered windows yeah. handheld. So it ended up not being very useful for much stuff. You're, you're better off just getting the steam deck. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. I'm curious to see who's going to play something at 120 hertz on this thing. Like, uh, phones these days are like 120 hertz, yeah. but that's just scrolling around like, yeah. like the OS. It just looks nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why. I don't know. So, uh, I mean, if you're interested in a new Ein, there you go. But I'm not. Until they make something new. Right. Uh, make a flip. There you go. Might be interested in that. Next news, Valve saying uh, they're not making another Steam Deck any anytime soon. The opposite of everybody else. Yep. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, Valve Deck duo Lawrence Yang and Yazin uh, Alden Hyatt sure uh have been doing the press rounds recently as australia is finally getting itself a proper proper steam deck release in that territory as part of that yang and adel hyatt uh have had to field the now standard questions about a potential steam deck too unsurprisingly their answer in an interview with reviews.org via eurogamer remains the same as last year namely that valve wants to wait until there is a tangible improvement in the technological ecosystem around handheld gaming pcs before even thinking about a new version uh, obviously, the release of the Steam Deck OLED uh, the year after the original came out might have led some folks to expect uh, some sort of yearly cadence of Valve handheld tech, uh, tech updates, uh, though probably not anyone although probably not anyone who has had anything to do with Valve or PC hardware releases. Uh, you only have to look at Valve Index VR headset and all of the noises about a second version or sequel to that uh, bit to that smart bit of tech to see that Gabe's uh, gang isn't about to spit out new, barely iterative hardware just for the sake of tacking on a two onto the box. If we want to talk about long last, uh, long lost sequels, you could make a nod to Valve software devs and a certain Freeman related series. Uh, I'll just skip to the uh, quote. Yang said in his latest interview that it is important to us uh, and, and we've tried to be clear, uh, we are not doing a yearly cadence. Uh, we're not going to do a bump every year, he continues. There's no reason to do that. And honestly, from our perspective, that's the kind uh, that's kind of not really fair to your customers to come out with something so soon that it's inc only incrementally better. So we really do want to wait for a uh, for a generational leap in com in compute without sacrificing battery life before we ship the real second generation Steam Deck. But it is something that we are excited about and we're working on. Uh, this is almost precisely echoes what Yang told uh, PC Gamer uh, around the launch of the OLED version last year. Uh, it needs to be the right time, uh, and we have to have the right parts for it. So we really want to, there to be a generational leap in performance for us uh, to be able to comfortably call it a Steam Deck 2. That's nice to hear. Yeah, like, in a world where all these uh, handheld manufacturers are releasing... yeah. 
five products a year. Yeah. It's nice to see a company be like, that's... No. He li they literally said it's unfair to the consumer. Yeah. Now, Valve is coming from a very privileged place here. Absolutely. In that uh, they're on the top of the food chain yes. as far as PC handhelds are concerned. Uh, they're making a lot of sales. Uh -huh. So they can uh, say this. Also, they make money from the sales of the software. Yes. And all these other manufacturers that are in the same boat do not make uh, money from any software. Yeah. So Valve can say this, but they're right. It is not fair to the consumer to yeah. release a product and then immediately, before that product even ships, release a whole nother product. Yeah. So, um, I like hearing this. I, I yeah. like hearing this from them. And, and they're our, saying all the right things. Everybody keeps asking when there's going to be a Steam Deck 2. Some people are afraid to get a Steam Deck because they think a Steam Deck 2 is right around the corner. Yeah. Clearly not. I'm still thinking that there might be like a mini version or something next year. Yeah. Uh, but a 2, we're a little bit away from, from a 2. Yeah. Uh, some pe I tweeted about this and people were uh, arguing about how there's like PC handhelds that are a lot more powerful and they're kind of leaving Valve in the dust with the Steam Deck. And I don't really think so. I think that yeah. there are PC handhelds that are a little bit more powerful, but they're twice as expensive. So yeah, they're twice as expensive. They run on Windows, which is still not optimized for a gaming handheld at all. It's not a great experience compared yeah. to a Steam Deck. Yeah. I think that Valve is still in a great place and doesn't need to release anything for a little bit. Yeah, I think they're fine. I think, you know, most people, when they say they want a, a PC gaming handheld, they're going to want a Steam Deck. Uh, so I like hearing that. Yeah. I mean, it's not exciting because it means that we're not going to see a new Steam Deck for a while, yeah. but, uh, that's okay because I, uh, don't think they should release one every year. Yeah. Direct shade from Valve to, uh, the Asus's and MSI's and the Lenovo's. Yeah. Anyway, next news, uh... Spider-Man 2 DLC. Nope. Nope. Uh, game developer Insomniac confirmed that the studio has no plans to develop story DLC for 2023's action adventure Spider-Man 2, likely disappointing many fans who are hoping for more content. On October 18th, Insomniac and Sony announced that Spider-Man 2 was coming to the PC in January, just 15 months after it launched exclusively on the PS5 to rave reviews. It's one of the fastest turnarounds we've seen for a PS for a PlayStation published exclusive to make the leap to PC, and it seems to indicate that Sony is fully committed to bringing its hit games to Steam. But for fans hoping today's PC port news would come alongside the reveal of DLC for Spider-Man 2, well, bad news, it's not happening. In a post on the official PlayStation blog announcing Spider-Man 2's PC port and what fans can expect, Insomniac Senior Community Manager Aaron Jason Espinoza confirmed that the studio isn't working on or planning any future story DLC for Spider-Man 2 on PC or PS5. Uh, while we have no additional story content planned for Spider-Man 2, we're delighted to bring all of our previously released post-launch content to the PC version, including New Game Plus, New Suits, color variants, uh, photo mode features, and more, Espinoza said. Uh, fans had hoped for Spider-Man 2 DLC after the first Insomniac Spider-Man game received three paid DLC uh, episodes that made up the expansion known as The City That Never Sleeps. However, Miles Morales, a standalone Spider-Man spinoff launched in 2020, never got DLC. Still, fans uh, were hopeful, even wondering if they'd get more Venom content, Today's news confirms that Insomniac is moving on from Spider-Man 2. The studio is working on a previously confirmed Wolverine game, as well as an unannounced X-Men game, which we learned about via malicious uh, hack in late 20, uh, 2023. Spider-Man 3 is also reportedly happening. Well, it's good to see that they're busy. It's good to see that they're busy. <laughs> it, it does kind of stink, though, because there were a lot of things that they could have easily um, expanded upon in like DLC. There are a lot of like uh, side missions that could have been um given extra content more fleshed out also i think the expectation was there the first game got pretty good dlc so it stands the reason that the next game can get pretty good dlc i liked the leaked dlc with the multiplayer that was going to be a, that was allegedly a separate game oh yeah well, that would have been cool yeah 
but you know what? We haven't seen anything about this Wolverine game since it's been announced a yeah. while ago. So I want to see more of that. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind them moving on to a new game. I guess if it if the you know if the choices are of uh, keep working on Spider-Man to get new content for that or work on new original games altogether, I'd rather the latter. You know, just to keep having new experiences. But you know, it, you know, it is kind of sad, right? Uh, you know what? I fell off of Spider Man. I wasn't really captured by it, so I mean, I, I, I don't really I care. Flattened <laughs> it, which I never do. Yeah, I like the the sensation was there. Like everything was still like that. I liked about the first game was still there. I think just that the excitement of the first game was lessened because a lot of it was like I I've done all this before. So would you get a DLC? I would have. Yeah, I think you know the the actual moment to moment gameplay is like what kept me coming back because like it was still fun to just swing around and like do yeah. spider-man shit next news microsoft pulls one dollar game pass trial so they always do this before a big game release yeah. and i guess in this they're doing it because of call of Duty. yeah microsoft has pulled its one dollar game pass trial just days before call of duty black ops 6 releases on october 25th the 14 day game pass trial was removed on october 8th preventing people from signing up for a trial and playing through black ops 6 campaign without paying for a full month of game pass microsoft first stopped its dollar trials for a game pass ultimate uh, and PC Game Pass in March last year before bringing it back and nerfing it down to just 14 days instead of a full month. The Xbox maker then briefly removed the dollar trial just before Starfield's debut in September. I, I pause. They didn't first stop the trial last year. They did it with... Uh... They've been doing this forever. They did it with uh, Halo. When Halo Infinite came out. No, right before no. Halo... Halo Infinite was a dollar. Like, they, they still had it there. That You're was... Right. That right. was one of the big controversies, like, because I think it was, I think it was Jeff I, I always, I was telling everybody, this game is great. You can play it for just a dollar. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's not surprising to see the dollar Xbox Game Pass uh, trial quietly removed once again, especially as Microsoft looks uh, to Call of Duty Black Ops 6 to boost its Game Pass subscriber numbers. Uh, as reported earlier this year, Microsoft had been debating whether to put new releases of Call of Duty into Game Pass with concern from some that the company uh with concerns from some at the company that the revenue generated from a typical Call of Duty sales would be undermined by Game Pass, a $1 trial would certainly undermine sales and subscriptions, especially when Activision traditionally sells more than 20 million copies of Call of Duty on average at around $70 each. Microsoft is also planning on bringing Call of Duty 6, Modern Warfare 3, and Warzone to Xbox Cloud Gaming later this month. Uh, this is the first time a Call of Duty game has been available at launch on Xbox Cloud Gaming following Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard last year. Yeah, this makes sense. I think that they are uh, realizing that I not. I think that they are losing money on the whole Game Pass thing, and, and yeah, uh, they are regretting. Uh, all of the messaging that they've had around. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Absolutely. Like, I'm surprised. Like, they keep bringing back the dollar trials because, like, it it clearly is a bad thing for them. You know. Also, like, people who already have Game Pass, you know, they already have Game Pass. Like, mm -hmm. I they've have not been very good about like getting new subscribers to Game Pass. You know? Well, the dollar. Uh, it's enticing. Trial is enticing. Yeah. yeah, and also it locks you in. Like, like yeah. you have your credit card, and they most people are not canceling it immediately. Right. You know, they're 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 letting it get charged. Mm -hmm. uh, this whole subscription model is making a lot of money for all these people. Uh, just Microsoft, they're losing the value part. Like, yeah, it used to be a no brainer to get Game Pass because you have all these great games, but they're uh, not delivering on the great games. No, especially because they keep like tiering it now. You know, now they have a version of Game Pass where you don't get the new games. I've been paying for, so I canceled my Game Pass. Yeah. But I've been paying for Apple Arcade. Yeah. Almost never use Apple Arcade. Right. Until recently, playing the fuck out of Bellatro <laughs> and worth the whole. My Apple year's Arcade worth of subscription. subscription lapsed, so I didn't get a chance to. I try. No, I suck. I hate myself. You just buy Bellatro. I could just buy Bellatro. Uh, could also just buy Alan Wake 2, uh, which is coming, oh. which is getting a PS5 Pro uh, update, but it is 30 FPS on quality mode with ray tracing. Uh, 
Remedy Games detailed its approach to Alan Wake 2's PS5 Pro update in a new post on its official site, explaining that quality mode will add ray tracing at the expense of running at 30 FPS, but that the patch will also include big improvements to performance mode. According to the official post, Alan Wake 2's quality mode will run at 30 frames per second with ray tracing while outputting at uh, 4K. Its a rendered resolution will be uh 2176 by 1224 in some ways it's not surprising given alan wake 2's hefty pc requirements uh which recommend at least an rtx 4080 for good performance with ray tracing turned up that said there are still meaningful improvements to be found in the ps5 pro version of alan wake 2 without sacrificing frame rate among other things remedy promises significantly higher output resolution roughly on par with a base ps5's quality mode by pushing the resolution to 4k uh, aligning with Sony's overall sales pitch for the console. Uh, it also includes overall improvements to stability, fog, volumetric lighting, and shadow accuracy. We did multiple experiments, including upgrade, upgrading the 60 FPS performance mode output from 1440p to 4K and adding um, Pisser, Sony's <laughs> AI-based upscaling method, uh, which, positively, which positively impacted image crispness and stability under motion, Revenue explained. Everybody loves image crispness. Yes. Uh, <laughs> increasing the internal rendering resolution consumes a lot of processing power, no matter how powerful your hardware is. However, in our experiments, even putting all the added power to increased rendering resolutions provided a barely noticeable difference in the output image or quality. Um, adding more pixels to gain a visual quality is not straightforward with the new AI-based upscaling methods. Uh, Remedy's post goes on to detail the ways the console version incorporates ray tracing as well as its costs, uh, noting how each ray must be traced and it hits... Uh, and it's hit, evaluated, and shaded. Uh, and then it goes on to like really go into the technical nitty gritty of like how they got it working on. I think we're gonna see a lot as the PS4 Pro gets closer. We're gonna see a lot more about how little <laughs> it yeah. actually changes things. I think that there's gonna be a lot of big <sighs> games that have uh, minor changes, and there's gonna be a lot of uh, I guess you would say smaller games that have yeah. almost no change at all. I just think, like, I think this is a big deal because Alan Wake 2, you know, was one of the biggest games in the last few years. Um, it's a very graphically intense game. Uh, and the whole selling point of the PS5 Pro, one of the big things Mark Cerny pushed was that you don't have to sacrifice between performance mode and quality mode. You can have the best of both worlds. You could have full 4K and running at 60 frames per second. Here comes Remedy saying, no, you can't. Yeah. I was kind of amazed at how good Alan Wake looked. Yeah. Uh, because Remedy's not like a small company. Yeah. But I think comparatively, like this game looks like a Resident Evil game or yeah. like a Grand Theft Auto or something. Like this game yeah. looks really nice. And those companies are a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. Remedy has 350 people working. Yeah. Which is not small, but it's also like not crazy big. Yeah. I mean, so I'm not surprised that they're not putting a lot of yeah. advancements into it. All right, next blooper team. They don't want. They said that's it. I'm never making a shitty game again, that which is, is great. That is exactly what they said. Every game company should say yes. This. Blooper team has said it's aware of the mixed reputation to some of its previous titles, and that the company is done with shitty games. Uh, speaking to GameSpot in the wake of the newly announced horror title Chronos: The New Dawn, the team behind the recently released Silent Hill 2 remake said that it's looking to shake its previous reputation and emulate the critical and commercial success of Silent Hill 2. We want to find our niche, and we think we found our niche. So now we just let so so now we just let's evolve with it," uh, said co-director uh, Jacek Ziba. Uh, and now that's happened. And now that happens is more complex, uh, but it also happens organically in a way like with 2016's Layers of Fear. People in the studio were like, okay, we made some shitty games before, but we can evolve. We gathered a team that loves horror, says co-director. Uh, the co-director added, uh, so we think, so I think for us, it would uh, not be easy to switch to other genres. We don't want to. Blooper Team's latest Silent Hill 2 was released earlier this month to widespread critical acclaim and currently has a Metacritic of 87. Uh, yeah, so that's nice. Blooper Team, uh, 
did not have the best track record when it came to their horror games. I, I looked at their uh, Wikipedia, and uh, yeah, n- none of their games really stand out to me like at all. Their previous like big game was the Medium. That was supposed to be like an Xbox series like launch title i remember that game. and that game reviewed poorly uh the blair witch game that came out a couple of years ago reviewed terribly they also do layers of fear yeah which i don't think people i are think fond of that there were big marketing campaigns for layers yeah. of fear uh so i've seen layers of fear before but i don't think that it reviewed well either um i i have mixed opinions on this because right. uh i'm sure that silent hill 2 is great yeah but also it is based off of an already good game it is based off <laughs> an already good game and you know whether you like him or not it has the funding of konami yeah so they had the funding of like a major uh third party publisher i mean this is so that this, helps it's good that this game is doing good because it yeah. means that they could get funding from other big publishers to make other great games so that's all fine so maybe they'll do another konami remake or 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 something yeah Uh, but if they try to make their own game again i have little faith well they already announced (laughs) they're they are making their own game again at chronos the new dawn right so and it look it looks fine but you know i don't know if they're gonna have the resources that they had while making silent hill too yeah i don't we'll see we'll see how it goes yeah it's hard to just say, say don't make a shitty game. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um Thank you Superman Rules. He does. For the Prime subscription. Uh and Nico Nix, did I say that I think for the 3 months? It's nice to see his live for once. Well, then. Uh next news, Gorilla Games done with Killzone. Yeah, Gorilla- talk about being done. Gorilla Games' decision to start work on Horizon Zero Dawn series uh, was deliberate choice to move away from the Killzone series, according to its art director. In an interview with the Washington Post, art director um, Roy uh, Postma, who has worked with Gorilla for 24 years, says that uh, following the release of Killzone Shadowfall on PS4, the studio decided it no longer wanted to work on the Killzone series. Uh, instead, they opted to start work on a new series with more colorful environments as opposed to the grittier, grayer worlds of Killzone. We were done with it as a team, uh, Post must explain. As a studio, we needed to refresh the palette. It was, by choice, the opposite of Killzone. Uh, Postma also suggested that the more diverse nature of the Horizon games means it appeals to a wider, audi- wider audience. Um, I think the themes that this story and the characters represent are relatable for all ages and people, uh, like having a found family of friends or finding your place in the world. Uh, Elsewhere in the article, Lego's product lead of Brandon Games, uh, Kate Bryant, explained how the upcoming Lego Horizon Adventures will help the series to expand, will help the series to expand the series reach even wider, particularly with younger players. So Killzone was it became sort of PlayStation's answer to Call of Duty and Battlefield. No, Killzone launched on the PlayStation 2 and was explicitly pitched as the Halo killer. Oh, okay. It was their shooter. It was the yeah. It was, it was their, their first person shooter because like Halo, Halo One was you know a big success. Halo Two had, was coming out and was gonna be you know set the world on fire. So Sony was like, we need our version of that. Make us a kill zone. And Gorilla made a kill zone. Everyone was like, sure. <laughs> and then they made two more, and everyone's like, all right, you're almost got it. Well, they don't need a kill. They don't need a Halo killer anymore because Halo killed itself. Yeah, <laughs> but uh. I would imagine that uh, Gorilla Games was probably sick of being that for Sony, you know, being the 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 shooter guys, yeah. like like having like Sony's were a lot. Sony's probably up their ass about making it a yeah. very specific way, and they're probably like, we just want to do our own thing. Yeah, I mean, they made four Killzone games, so I think by that point they're like, we got to do something else. Like this is not working for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Nintendo's secret Mario and Luigi Brothership developer is a bit of a surprise. Yes, the developer behind the upcoming Mario and Luigi Brothership has seemingly been revealed, and the identity of the studio behind the upcoming Switch role-playing game is unique. Um, 
Early copies of the game, not officially due uh, to go on sale until November 7th, are now out in the wild and lists Tokyo-based Acquire as having worked on Brothership with Nintendo. Acquire is the veteran developer behind uh, the Tenchu and Way of the Samurai series, though is perhaps better known to Nintendo fans as the team that worked on a uh, team that worked with Square Enix on um, Octopath Traveler 1 and 2. Nintendo previously declined to name the team making Brothership, the long away the sixth installment in the Mario Luigi series, despite spam speculation as to who was behind it. The series previously developer Alpha Dream sadly closed its doors in 2019, though Nintendo said that some veterans of the series had worked on uh, had worked to some extent on the new series. Uh, on screen I'm showing Way of the Samurai, because I've never seen this game before. PS2 game. Okay. Um this is a previous uh What's the company? Acquire? Acquire. Previous Acquire game. Yes. Interesting, because uh, Brothers... So, they also worked on Octopath Traveler. Yeah. That makes sense, because it's a RPG, yes. and this game, Brothership, is an RPG. Yeah. Uh, Octopath Traveler looks way different than yeah. what Mario and Luigi looks like. Yeah. It looks like a Mario game. Mm -hmm. uh, that's cool, though. Yeah. Uh, this game actually... Mario and Luigi Brothership actually looks kind of cool. I don't know if I'm going to play it, because I'm not really an RPG guy, yeah. but uh, it looks kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo has recently adopted a policy of not announcing key develop details, including the identity of developers or staff, including voice actors ahead of the game's launch. It's decision. Uh, it's a decision which has led to increased internet speculation around which company might be behind a particular project, such as the recent uh, Echoes of Wisdom, even after demos of the game have been playable to press at public events. Yeah, so Nintendo recently has just been like, we're not telling you who actually made this game. It's, it's an very annoying. Yes. It's very stupid. Like, like, a lot of Nintendo games are made by their own in-house companies, but yeah. uh, some of them are made by second or third party developers and uh, give them credit. Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. That's the thing. Like it's not, you know, if we find out who's developing the game, we're going to be upset. That's not the issue. The issue is just like, we're curious. And like these people deserve to have their work celebrated. You know, it could be a way for them to, uh, or like get around leaks like maybe they don't want these people to be targeted but i mean i think i think, I think I, credit's more important than the I games th are gonna i get think it has anyway. more to do with control i yeah. think it has more to do with like no, this doesn't. is a nintendo game nintendo makes the game yeah. you know uh people also uh from these same leaks uh people i guess are interested that this game is being made in unreal engine yeah um nintendo i They've used Unreal Engine before, haven't they? I think so. Um, Nintendo usually has their own stuff, but like, I mean, second party Pokemon developers have been using Unity. Like, yeah, there's doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, <laughs> that they're I mean, using <laughs> Unreal Engine. A lot of I I do know that like Unreal Engine Five has become like increasingly popular with Japanese developers, mm -hmm. so it doesn't surprise me that like you know even Nintendo is now like dipping its toes in Unreal. I think Yoshi's Crafted World was Unreal Engine. I'm just looking it up right now. Right. Yeah, Yoshi's Crafted World was Unreal Engine. Yeah. Pikmin Four, I think, is Unreal. They they've used it. Yeah. Um. So it's it's really not a not a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's just that you know there's like those old YouTube videos where people are like, uh, those put Mario in Unreal oh, Engine yeah. with like realistic graphics and he looks mm -hmm. completely out of place and people would be like, Nintendo, hire this man. And yeah. all he did was like a Unity asset flip or an Unreal Engine asset mm -hmm. flip. So. Anyway, uh, last news, Prince of Persia. Everyone's fired. Uh, there won't be a sequel to the Prince of Persia Lost Crown and the team that built the game no longer exists at Ubisoft. According to a new rumor from French journalist uh, Gautaz, uh, Ubisoft has disbanded the team behind the game after it failed to reach internal expectations. A sequel for the game was also pitched, but the company rejected it. The news uh, was first revealed during uh, Gautaz's uh, show on the Origami YouTube channel. The show is in French, but a user from Reset Era summarized the report. The report claims that a decision about the future of the game was decided a few weeks after the release. Uh, it was made clear by Ubisoft that after releasing DLC and cosmetics for the game, support would be done. It was also said that members of the core dev team fought for the aforementioned sequel and even more expansions. Lastly, it's said that Ubisoft didn't want another game because those higher up in the company uh, believed it could cannibalize the potential long-term sales of the first title. 
Uh, Insider Gaming uh, has reached out to multiple sources on the legitimacy of the rumor. Should any new information come in, this article will be updated accordingly. Until then, please take this information with a grain of salt. Ubisoft, try not to make a terrible move. Yeah. Uh, any percent speed run. <laughs> uh, like, so the team was disbanded within Ubisoft. Yeah. That we don't know if they were fired. We don't know if they were fired but, but or they like probably working on something else. Yeah. Or like moved to other teams. This line about uh, they didn't want the, a sequel to the game to cannibalize the long term sales of. The, uh, the first game. Okay, never releasing a yeah, an Assassin's like, Creed game like, ever fucking, again, yeah, then. Exactly. Assholes. Dummies. Like, that's the, what type of dumbass logic is that? <laughs> they also... I'll turn all the lights He's off so this one. The they, on. they released this uh, fucking other 2D Prince of Persia game yeah. like, immediately after they released this yeah. game. What type of fucking stupid move was that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's it, this is like this is go back to what I say and like Ubisoft like they, they, they are genuinely run by idiots. They are genuinely yeah. run by people who I don't think understand, you know, how the video game industry works anymore. It's is it ridiculous. Yeah. This game uh I pe wish people like this game. I love this game. Ubisoft. Yeah. I wish they bought Ubisoft instead of Call of Duty because then maybe somebody with a brain, you know, would be able to you know, shift like steer the company towards like yeah. something resembling a functioning system. I really liked this game. It was yeah. one of the best games of of the year, uh, Prince of Persia. Uh, it's very dumb that they're that that. It seems like they just don't want a sequel. What were the sales expectations? Because yeah, did it? Are they saying it did bad? They're saying it didn't meet internal expectations. Which I guess God. means like they had a number in mind and the game did not hit that. That doesn't number. make sense because I'd imagine this was a smaller game and they having high expectations for a game like uh, it. It did really good. Like people loved. Yeah, the game. it got it got critical acclaim. Like, I wouldn't have bought it if if it right wasn't good. So. Uh, According to Inside Gaming, uh, Prince of Persia Lost Crown had accumulated around 300,000 players uh, and estimated $15 million in revenue as of January 30th, 2024. So that's, you know, within two weeks of its launch. That sounds great. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. $15 million in revenue, like in this day and age for a 2D side scrolling game. Yeah. What fucking expectations do they have, dude? Yeah. The game did good. <sighs> And like they had, they must have known this. Like this is not the Sands of Time remake that they've been threatening to release <laughs> for years now. This is not Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Like this is this is a, sm a smaller scale digital only release. Oh, no, it did come out physically. But regardless, it's a smaller scale release. You know that shouldn't have been like this should not have been uh, you know penciled in for ten million units sold. Yeah. Very dumb. Yeah. Uh, no wonder Ubisoft is failing. Yeah. Get fucked, idiots. Get fucked, idiots. Uh, all right. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. This is a quote tweet. It is uh, a picture of James Charles's face. Mm -hmm. And it says, his hair is so ledge grabbable. <laughs> and then the quote tweet is a Smash Bros. Melee yeah. match happening on top of James Charles's head. Very funny. It is, <laughs> it is funny. I have no idea who this person is, but I do find the, the Roy and Star Fox fighting on his head to be quite comical. <laughs> Fam famous uh, YouTuber. Okay. Again, well, old I, school YouTuber. I'm almost 40, so I this uh, Controversial in some ways that I don't understand. Because I, I haven't looked into it. Most YouTubers are. <laughs> have you noticed True. that? True. You are not wrong. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Oh, yeah. Now we'll talk to you guys. <laughs> yes. Let's start with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. KHLD, thank you for the Prime subscription. I appreciate it. Uh, where am I? Michael Chapman from last week's Wolf Den Podcast. As a young guy, I can say I also grew up with Tom and Jerry, especially because in the early 2000s, they made a lot of movies that aired on Cartoon Network. Were there more than two Tom and Jerry movies? I wasn't aware. Yeah. Oh. I remember one. Wasn't there one recently? 
There was one recently, but yeah. that was like a couple of years ago. That was in 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there were like, you know, direct -to video. Oh, yeah, direct -to video movies. There was a lot. Mega Dragon says, Tom and Jerry is notorious for making tons of cartoon movies. Yeah, from 2000 to like 2022, there's like a lot of them. No, oh, that's right. They did do a Tom and Jerry the uh, crossover with Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I do remember that because I remember thinking I was on drugs when I read <laughs> that. Mindless Soul says, I started watching this podcast because of Bob. Because Bob is in it, but I have stayed for Will's wisdom. And that's the plan. That, that's how we that's get how it. We that's get how we sink it. it. Poncho says, we are going to need more mythical story time readings from the Wolf Bros. Oh, because oh, of the Pokemon leak. Yeah, we're not doing that again. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, Tolmander says, Fairlife milk is the best milk if you're looking for regular milk that's easy on your stomach. It's lactose-free. Isn't that what mom Wrong. drinks? A2 milk is the best milk. Fuck you. <laughs> Fairlife is fine. I do like the A2 better, though. Is it the same? Wait, is it the same thing? That is, that is not what mom drinks. Mom drinks lactate. I don't like lactate milk because it fucks up the steam wand it gets like mm. way too like burnt up on right. the steam wand their life makes that core power shit that you see in stores now their life is fine a2 is like just real milk well isn't that what fair life is supposed to be yes yeah but a2 i, I like it okay all right, everybody. Uh, do I need to explain myself? Actually, I got to walk it back. I just figured out how to steam the uh, Califia Farms almond milk. I okay. just figured it out. I just, what it, you have to do is you have to steam it, get a lot more froth than you normally would mm -hmm. from regular milk, like froth it up like a lot. And then when it gets too hot to touch, leave it on the counter for like 30 seconds to a minute and then pour your latte art. That's how I decided. So everything's fine now, everybody. <laughs> I figured it out. Um, Charlie Fenn says, what do you think about all the remasters we seem to be getting recently? Like remasters of Tomb Raider 4 to 6. Those were just announced, unsurprisingly, considering how well 1 to 3 did. I like having them all accessible again, just third-party price points are so much better than Nintendo's remaster. I think the thing about like I mean third party price points, what does that mean? Because Nintendo like generally prices their like re releases much higher than because I think the Tomb Raider you're getting three games. Is he talking about aftermarket prices? Because those are not great. No, she's talking about um I I think she's referring to the fact that like for the price of three games, like Nintendo sold Metroid Prime remastered for like the same price. Yeah, but Metroid Prime. I know it's fucking expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the problem, like, it's obviously it's good that we're getting all these, like, re-releases and remasters and stuff, but I think the problem is, like, it's, we're getting so much of them because I think the industry is in a holding pattern right now. Because, like, they don't really have anything new to announce, so they're just re-releasing their old stuff to, like, keep people satiated until they can figure something out. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's easier for them to do. Yeah, because like not that it's easy, but it is easier for them Because we to do don't that. have a new Castlevania game or a new, uh, contra game or new and metal people gear game. want that shit yeah also we're getting a remake of metal gear solid 3 we're getting collections of castlevania and contra uh we're getting a new silent hill game but like we got to get the remake out first metal gear literally cannot make a new game if right. they made a new game it will not do good no. but a remake of an old game maybe it might be something uh i mean there's they're always running the risks of making a new uh uh game in the franchise yeah they're running the risk of it not being received well and it's mm -hmm. just a much safer bet to re release yeah. an older game i like remakes of i, I just like having the game be available in any way possible i would prefer the original version to be preserved uh give me an untouched version of the old game in some way yeah. let me be able like we were talking about resident evil one remake yeah you can buy that now uh and you can revert the controls to the original yes so that's very nice mm -hmm. uh silent hill 2 that's a remake yeah it's not exactly the original game right 
Can you get the original Silent Hill 2 right now? I don't think you can. See, that's not good. Yeah. I don't like that. That's not the way I'd yeah. like for it to be done. The the thing about the Silent Hill 2, though, do you remember like years ago they did the HD remaster of 2 and 3 for 360 and PS3? Nope. So they did that. Okay. It was around the same time that they did the Metal Gear HD collection on 360 and PS3. That okay. I know you remember. That I remember because I played okay. the shit out of that. Quick story time with Willie. Uh, <laughs> so when... So they did the Metal Gear remaster. That was successful. So Konami said, okay, we'll do it with Silent Hill. Uh, we'll do it with the Silent Hill games again. They only did Silent Hill 2 and 3 for some reason. They didn't do the fourth game. Uh, but they did not have the source code for Silent Hill 2 and 3. It was just gone. They did not exist anymore. The developers behind the uh, remaster somehow were able to track down a 70 cent pr complete source code of the PC re uh, ports of those games. Oh so not even the original masters, the PC ports of those games and had to finish it from there. And that led to a lot of like jank and graphical glitches and the, the fog, which is a big part of Silent Hill 2, just not working properly. And uh, Comic Sans fonts for a lot of the signs. I remember that. I remember yeah. seeing screenshots of that. So, yeah. So, I know you said that, like, Blooper Team had it easy with Silent Hill 2 because that was already a good game. That's not necessarily as we've seen. But... Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I didn't the, mean it like it was easy to make the game. I'm just saying the game was already <laughs> good. <laughs> My point is... The bones of a good game were already there. If we Even if we wanted to have, like, the original version of Silent Hill 2 it's not technically possible because konami does not have the source code for right. it which is baffling to yeah. me i mean right i just want the game to be available in some way you know and that is an issue that konami has to figure out like, yeah there's a lot of stories like that a lot of stories of older uh game companies not keeping copies of the older games like there's, yeah there's no oh, yeah rumors no. that Nint old nintendo games they don't have copies of them they yeah. just kind of threw them out because mm -hmm. they didn't think they were going to be anything special all right we are in the chat for a brief moment before yeah we have to leave anything anybody got anything good to say have you seen the i and neo pocket dmg yes the pricing is out of this world i pre-ordered one it's I thought it is it Android? I think it's Android. I was hoping it would be Windows right. because so the Pocket DMG looks like a Game Boy DMG. Right. Wouldn't it be cool if it was a PC? Yes. But like that, I think it's just Android. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, it looks cool. I'm I'm kind of interested in it. I really liked the uh the the Pocket Micro, the Game Boy Micro styled one. I really liked it. Yeah. So I think I like this one. Have you seen the Marvel Magic the Gathering? Oh. Uh, I, I saw that was announced. I didn't actually look at the cards. Uh, I'm not a nerd, so I don't play Magic the Gathering. I'm a real man. <laughs> Buy action figures and display them. I was going to say, you're not a nerd. You spent mm, fucking 12 hours at Comic-Con. I spent Saturday. way too long at Comic-Con. <laughs> that, uh, that was a mistake. I feel like I spent two I know. I should have done that. I didn't think it would be that bad. I see all these, like, you know, the cosplayers on Instagram. It's like, oh, my God, this is the best New York Comic Con ever. I'm so excited. Oh, my God. And, because, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, I wanted to die. That's because they get to hang out with all the other cosplayers right. that they, like, know. From and I had to hang out, hang out with my friends who I hate. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So would I do it again? Not for that long. I'm too old for this. No, you got to just. Roll in and roll I, out, yeah. man. Roll in. But I, do not wake but no, up early for it. The problem with it, this is going to be a New York Comic Con. You also Con. went on Saturday. I went on Saturday, which is a mistake. Never go to Comic Con on Saturday. There's too many people. Another problem is, and this is less to do with like how long I spent there, because like I like going to comic book conventions. I like rifling through the back issues. I like seeing what everybody has. The vendor selection this year at New York Comic Con kind of sucked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the major comic book publishers just weren't there. Um, Marvel was there, but their booth is never comic book centric. It's just like whatever movie or TV show they're promoting that year. Like there were not a lot of great comic book vendors. Like most of the toy vendors that were there, like are always there and they're getting way yeah. more expensive and just like, you know, I just, 
wasn't having the same experience I usually get from going to a convention, or like rifling through things and finding like and discovering things for good prices. Like I, I got stuff that I was excited to get that I was like actually actively looking for, but like the, the same like feeling I had in the past just wasn't there this time because so many other booths just weren't there. Yeah. I don't think anything excited me like at all. Yeah. That was, that was there. There was like a couple of cool toys, but like, honestly, it's the same thing all of the time. Yeah. But I had a great time because I rolled in at like three o'clock and rolled out at like five o'clock. Yeah, I think it, if I go next year, that's what I'm doing. I'm going in. At and that noon. was Thursday. Yeah. And it's a lot. I mean, it's still pretty packed, yeah. but it was a lot more manageable on mm -hmm. Thursday. Will, are you excited about the absolute DC line of comics? I'm hearing good things about it, and I do like some of the direction they're going with, uh, with them. But I am I'm sitting back and I'm letting everyone else tell me whether or not it's good. <laughs> uh because I, I got too many too many things i'm reading right now um so everyone else tell me how it is and i will i will read the trades when they come out uh have you exposed have you been exposed to the nutter butter tiktok yes i hope that's just the cookies it is oh thank god uh their tiktok account is uh very uh how do you how do you avant-garde oh yeah it's just like random, like shitty, weird. Stuff. Okay. Uh, I I know you don't watch the Penguin. Okay. You should watch the Penguin. Uh, the Penguin this week. Um, they need to kidnap somebody, and they do that. The Penguin introduces it to his gang by opening up his TikTok on his phone and showing it. Uh, the character's TikTok account. So oh. The Penguin has TikTok. Everybody. <laughs> That's fucking weird. <laughs> You're saying this is a good show. This the show is incredible. <laughs> it just gets better every episode. Can confirm I have no urge to buy Nutter Butters. I have to say, I like Nutter Butters. Nutter Butters are and good. And you know what? If I see them in the store, I might have to pick them up. Yeah. I don't hate the TikTok account. Right. It's just, it, it reminds me a little bit of the Eat Quiz No Subs guys. Oh, I do Except love those that guys. That song yeah. is good, and yeah. and imagine that, but there is no song, and it's just random, yeah, sh like weird shit. Yeah, uh, TikTok is brain rot. To be clear, like I don't think yes. the penguin actively watches TikTok. It's just that the person he wanted to kidnap was active on TikTok. So to ch to show his henchmen who they were after, he showed them the character's TikTok, which this character definitely seems like the type of a guy who would be bragging about his crimes on TikTok. TikTok is absolutely brain rot, but you could make an argument that the show you are watching right now is brain yes. rot. So also we are on TikTok. So <laughs> literally this is the same brain rot. Spoil the episode more well, dude. I am keeping this very vague. <laughs> I wish. I, why'd you ruin that one plot point where he pulls out his phone and shows a TikTok? That I was really excited for that. You see the new Joker movie? No, no, I won't be. I, I, it's gonna be on digital like at the end of the month. So when it's available, I'm, I'm gonna watch that shit. I'm not. I need to see how bad this movie is. We I, talked about it already. Yes, I never liked the first one. Me neither. And. It seems like everybody just woke up. And like, yeah. I don't think this movie's any different than the first Probably one. Probably not. I'm hearing people telling me like it's like night and day. Like I need to know. I need to know for myself what what happened. I need I need to see it with my own eyes. Yeah. Uh Edward Bova. Actually, I think your show is very educational. I feel like I accomplish something every time I watch uh your podcast although uh i only watch two podcasts on twitch are you saying that we would show up on the stem tab on tiktok <laughs> you think nintendo security will be better on the next console security you mean like the ability to like run a flash cart or something uh yeah it's i think it's yeah. always going to be better and better and better yeah but um, by the same token like people always generally find like ways to yes like crack it you know yeah it'll be it'll yeah. be crackable for sure Got it, brain. Thanks for the 40 months. How you doing? Good. Um. Uh, same. I just watched this in another podcast. A lot of people who watch this don't watch anything else on Twitch. And that's because 
most of you come here from YouTube. So it kind of yeah. makes sense. Uh, all right. That's it. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden and youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch this, you can do that as well because we're also on audio podcasts on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, audible.com pocket cast amazon music but no matter where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms aj's on go watch him uh i'll be on on thursday there's a small chance i'll be on tomorrow if i really feel like it but i don't know uh i want to play i think sonic and shadow is coming out it is i've heard it's good I heard it's good. I think IGN give it a nine. IGN giving a Sonic game a Isn't high that score? fucked up? What kind of a world are we living in? I want to play that, so maybe I will. Uh, thanks for... I also have a video up, I think, on Thursday. I want... I'm, th- I'm, ho- I'm holding out hope for a Nintendo announcement tomorrow, and then I'll just, yeah. I'll just fart a video out. But if not, I'm going to have a video out on some stupid PC that I was playing with. Uh, otherwise, thanks for hanging out. See you later. Goodbye. Bye.